Hello and welcome to Outlander's Guide to Ladaria, an original Dungeons and Dragons campaign. <laughs> oh, I hope you all had a wonderful week so far, and that you're going to have another wonderful week coming up soon. Um, may I direct you towards our newest uh, piece of technology? <laughs> uh, we now have uh, a DD Beyond overlay over the Twitch stream, so if you hover mouse over the, the, the screen, you'll be able to see um, the Carter sheets of the players in this campaign. Um, at least a little bit of them. Um, so that's exciting. That's exciting news. Uh, for now, let's just jump right in and join our players. Ooh. Hello! 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 Hello. Hello. Wonderful to be here with you all again. How have your weeks been? Good, good. Good. What's Sorry. behind the door? <laughs> what door? Oh, door. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, before before we can talk about the door, uh, we need to talk about what happened. All the events that led up to the door. Oh no! But how was that? Like you? <laughs> you mean like some sort of? Summary of the last session we played? Yes. Some kind of and retelling of what happened. Perhaps. A recapturing of the moments. Perhaps uh, such a retelling should be performed by one of you? Nose goes. Right, okay. Calix? <laughs> 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 no. Uh, yeah, if um, if we want, yeah, I can set the recap. I guess I can. I'll, I'll volunteer this time. It's a little bit short oh. notice, but I, I think I can throw <laughs> something together. All right. How nice of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> the thought just occurred to me to perhaps stylize this as I am indeed improving this as I go. And I am electing to style this as a form of like 1912's radio announcer. Let me adjust my camera so I can see this giant logo to really get into, into theme. <laughs> Would you like a All music right. change? Uh, yeah, sure. Actually, yeah, uh, yeah. Hit up some music. Give, give me something more action-packed. Ah. Uh... Yes. Previously on Outlander's Guide to Ladaria, our motley crew of adventurers continue making their merry way through the many magical trials present in the old ruins, determined to discover what became of their new friend, Jamuel Fleetfoot. Despite the dangers they faced thus far, our heroes pressed onwards, solving one puzzle after another. Dream World Escapade after Dream World Escapade, just slowly built over time between the wary of individuals of the party, tempered by the bonds of combat, stinky beds, and hieroglyphic crossword puzzles. <laughs> their unbreakable bond was quickly tested as they placed their collective lives into the hand of a 400-year-old socially inept anthropomorphic frog leaping into a deep dark <laughs> crevice. Waiting for them at the bottom of the pit was a large sealed entryway with two small skeletons, one of a small humanoid, the other canine in nature, acting as an impromptu doormats to welcome them into the <laughs> next session of Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. Also, Pip has a dog skull. He's a little creepy. <laughs> wow, that was, that was like... You managed to condense a lot in so little time. Yeah, it turns out when you speak at the, at, the, yeah. at the pace of a 1920s radio announcer. I never I heard- like that I never once heard you take in any- any air! Did you breathe? <laughs> it's like called a... reciprocal breathing. You just- <laughs> You just breathe in through your nose while you speak out your mouth. It's easy. Whoa. You know, as a kid, I was like so impressed when I realized I could have like a balloon that's filled with air and um, have it like put it in my mouth so the air would go in, but simultaneously would breathe out of my nose. So I was breathing in from one from one hole and breathing out of the other, and I thought it was the greatest stuff ever. <laughs> well, you've just been bested today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who needs to breathe? Well done, Matt. Oh, why did I? That was you. great. That was he's great. He's breathing through his skin, of course. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, he's a frog. That Wait, does that mean he can like talk forever without needing to? <laughs> of to course. Stop? <laughs> How do you think he was such a good lecture hall professor, which you guys <laughs> don't know yet, unless you do? Hmm. Oh, uh, we hmm. know that he was a professor. Now hold on it's... a second. My OBS has crashed. 
Oh, All right, no. it's back. Oh. It's back. It's back. <laughs> yeah, he was a hell of a lecturer in his day. <laughs> he never had to take breaks between points, so uh, you had to take notes real fast. <laughs> <laughs> instead of taking a water between, between instead of between taking things, a drink of water, he just continues he just talking and just dumps himself. it on his face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, just a, he's just in a bathtub the whole time. He just <laughs> walking back and forth. He just has like a bucket of water on his podium. He kind of dunks his hand in there and leaves it there for a minute while he keeps talking. <laughs> his feet every it's... once in a while. <laughs> It no, he like would his... never deign to walk around with no shoes on. He's not going to subject them to that level of cruelty. <laughs> 400 feels... year old frog feet. It feels like a Pontifex, where it's supposed to do like a PowerPoint presentation. So there wouldn't be any pictures. It would just be like seven pages full of text. <laughs> and he goes through the slides like 10 seconds for each slide. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he doesn't even bold anything. <laughs> Everything's at font size 8. <laughs> with the uh, uh what's the what's the term jason you wowed me with this word while we were setting up the overlay the kerning oh yeah kerning the yeah. kerning is like negative six <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> just uh, hyper condensed it's not right. double spaced it's half spaced i'm giving uh, i'm giving obs a little bit of time um I can see... Well, I, I'm just checking that everything is good. Um, it's telling me that the stream is unstable, but it seems fine to me. Let me look at it. Or is anyone else looking at it right now? I closed it whenever we started. You know what, the stream? I, I mean, it says I have three viewers, so I'm assuming yeah, that three I'm, of I'm you have stream. it open. I can see it. <laughs> I'm here. Looks good to me. Yeah, it's it looks fine. And I just uh, I just unmuted it, and all the sound is fine. Most wonderful. All right. In that case, uh, allow me to <clears throat> bring you back to where we last left off. I have everything ordered now, so whoop. Whoop, Ooh. and whoop, and whoop. There we go. Ah. Feel free to place your tokens in here. This so... is the rubble. <laughs> oh, we, um, gotta, we gotta go in the proper way. <laughs> <laughs> or you can increase your lift height, that will also do. Yeah. I so, forgot how that works. Can I just put auto-raise on mine. Oh yeah, that does, that does it too. Can you put it on mine as well? Uh, right click your token, oh, yeah. uh, okay. where it says toggles, <clears throat> click on auto raise. Yes, that's nice. Um, oh. <laughs> oh! Oh look, I can so seamlessly glide over rocks, <laughs> and terrain, and people, like yeah, Pip. You have... well, <laughs> it's not easy to get over Pip. Oh. oh. Okay. You stand in the ruined room at the bottom of the drop, surrounded by rubble and silence. You have unceremoniously collected the remains of Jamuel Fleetfoot and his dog, the bones of the man who discovered Aldaria, and those of his loyal companion who followed him, even in such a treacherous place. You hold the book that Jamuel wrote, the years of research, findings, and thoughts that he collected all in one place, the culmination of all his work and exploration, his precious legacy, now empty, but... Alive. You didn't expect to find him like this. Your group shares a quiet, somber moment, contemplating Jamil's fate and what he should be doing next, until you turn to face a double door. There you notice something forming at its base, a puddle of inky darkness collecting itself from the shadows of the room. As this essence comes together, it rises up and forms something large, tall, with no discernible limbs, whose body seems entirely made out of flickering shadows, twisted and tied together. Though it has no head, you can sense its stare on you, and it begins to slither your way. Roll initiative. Oh, crap. <gasps> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was quick. Oh, no. Getting right into it today. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, I will set my initiative properly this time. I've 
Darn it. What the heck? <laughs> um, <laughs> it, looks like a, it looks like a weird cactus. <laughs> a cactus that's going meh. <laughs> oh no, the hungry, hungry oh, caterpillar. Yeah, He's so that. hungry. I didn't notice that had a face. <laughs> <laughs> it has a face? Oh, it does. <laughs> you have to yeah. like. Oh, it's yeah, so disgruntled. I love it. <laughs> Well, he's been in here for a while. <laughs> Get off of my lawn! <laughs> anyway. Ta-da! Look at the initiative just working uh, on the first try. Nice. Why am I first? <laughs> <clears throat> okay, Pip, it's your go. Uh, is there music? Did I turn it down too low? There is music. There is, there is really? music. It's very ominous. Oh no, it's not working for me. All right, I'll no. relog after my turn. Pip is going to look up at this dark, menacing, brooding creature. And in one fluid motion, he's going to hide behind this rock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking the hide action. Uh, <clears throat> does the hide action require self? Uh, yeah, it's the the hide action. So, okay. I'll roll stealth. I really dislike that on D and D Beyond, if I type in a search box "hide," the first thing it brings Pretty up good. is the equipment. And uh, oh, oh, oh! There we go. Yeah, uh, Pip will just like reach down to his, his pouch while he's behind the rock and uh, make a few of them magical and just wait behind there for a bit. All right. And now I'll relog. <laughs> Brook. Mm. <clears throat> I'll go forward. No secret message on the walls. There were the hands. Okay, that's true. There were the hands. All right. Yes, I'll there is it. like a, a hand uh, print on one on the right side of the door and one on the left. Because the door is what? so big, it's like uh, it can't be the same person reaching for both, you know? I'm rolling to attack. Does a 10 hit? <laughs> a 10 does not. <laughs> Alright. But it is a valiant attempt. Guess that's my turn. Uh, just shaking a little bit about the sudden appearance of this thing and its sheer size. You're not used to um, meeting something that is bigger than you. Um, but you go for it anyway. You, you overcome your initial um, worry and you move to strike, uh, to thing not being entirely solid, uh, your your blade phasing through something, that you, a part of it that you thought it to be. Uh... What happened to the music? Yeah. <laughs> it did not loop. It paused oh, in the okay. middle. This is paused, yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I can hear it now. Wait. I don't know what did it. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, your blade just going through it and uh, seemingly touching nothing. So moving on to Talix. Uh, Talix is very shaken right now. Just like, he just says, oh god, so oh god, so oh no. Uh, very, still just kind of shaken from everything from before and exhausted. He's just going to, uh, get, unstrap his shield, get it ready. Uh, grab his orb and uh, with the bonus action uh, cast Shalele once again and just kind of prepare nothing nothing to do this turn that's it in which case um, I am next 
let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, this being of just intertwined darkness um, turns towards the one that uh, attempted to strike it, and uh, the these threads that make up its body uh, there's this moment where they some of them separate a little bit and they form kind of like an opening and uh, then air comes out <clears throat> of that opening like it's blowing from its mouth and that's coming for Brooke who needs to roll a constitution saving throw constitution all right Uh oh. Do I save with a five? <clears throat> you do not. Rip. Alright, let me oh, so close. bring these out. <laughs> <laughs> um, the rest of you watch uh, as uh, um, this light breeze blows over Brook and his body falls to the ground, uh, seemingly unconscious. Mm. Oh. <laughs> um, Rook, you don't feel yourself hitting the ground, you feel yourself hitting the wall behind you. Um, the rest of you also oh. seeing uh, oh a shade uh, appearing at the end of the wall, um, seemingly coming out of uh, Rook's body. So, uh, Dennis, <clears throat> as, as like uh, before in previous sessions, you were asleep and uh, your essence is separated from your body. So you're seeing the rest oh. of, uh, you're seeing the, everything else, all the other, your companions as uh, uh, featureless shades, except for the shade itself. Uh, this looks exactly like it did before. Uh, it's not any more vague or different. It's like this big uh, clump of darkness that is uh, about to chomp on your body. Oh. Okay. Because you're prone, it's with advantage. Oh, uh, where did I put the stats? Does a 17 hit? Nope. <gasps> okay. Um, it does not. All right, so as it reforms itself after blowing air towards you, um, some of these tendrils of darkness move toward your body, but uh, um, they they fail to have enough time to, to grip you before uh, Tekka gets to act. Yeah, so uh, Tekka glances towards Brook's uh, limp body before strengthening the grip on his core staff and does a sharp swing left to right. Let's see here. Twenty-four hits. Nice. All right. Let's see. Eleven damage. And then one unarmed strike. Let's see here. Probably not gonna hit. <laughs> a 14 hits. Oh, oh, well, I learned something new today. <laughs> yeah, it's this, uh, this is big. Uh, it's a big Level thing that three. wears no armor. And that is six damage. Um, and then, uh, yeah. Tekka is very seeing just what happened to Brooke, so he is going to be prepared to dodge out of any dark tendrils approaching. Okay. With a dodge action. And that's his turn. <clears throat> um, so how does it work? You did. You were able to do two attacks. Is it because of the quarter staff? Uh, yeah, because... It's a monk. Oh, oh you're right. I, get, I, I can't dodge. Yeah, you're right. I, I, I think that's the second attack is a bonus action. Yeah, you can't All do right. two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, oh. 
Yeah, you I'm just gonna keep... stand there, take the take the hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do keep light on your feet, uh, expecting a hit coming soon. But for now, you have successfully distracted it from um, from devouring a Bruce unconscious body. A Pontifex, your go. Yeah. Um, is there some kind of check I can make to see, like, is this thing, is there anything special about this thing, or is it like pretty clearly it's just a big version of the these specter things we've seen before <clears throat> uh it's it's uh, obvious enough to most of you and especially to someone as uh, as smart and observant as yourself that it is uh, uh pretty much just a bigger version okay of uh, well it did something that uh, you didn't see the others do yeah the slapped brook and he fell to the floor <laughs> um and then we saw uh, we see his little shadow right like his little shade yeah. and it came out of him okay um, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess Pontifex is going to step back. Oh, hello! And he's gonna cast Tobin <laughs> <laughs> Uh, needs to make a 14 wisdom save. Okay, what do you say he's casting? Uh, a 14 wisdom save. Uh, uh, he's casting Toll the Dead on, uh, on the shade. Okay, then nothing happened. <laughs> yeah, you hear the uh, the goat bleat across the room, and uh, <laughs> Pontifex makes his way back here, and is like, yeah, that doesn't work too well, huh? <laughs> That's the end of his turn. <laughs> Pip, back to you. I told you, you should throw the rocks. And Pip <laughs> will hand a couple of them to Pontifex. You took them back last time. <laughs> he looks so offended. <laughs> and, uh... Pip will, will, will uh, sort of toss one up in the air, and then it just starts to hover in place there. And Pip will look over to the professor and, and uh, say telepathically, Here, I'll show you! And we'll cast Catapult towards the greater shade. Okay. Is it an attack roll? Uh, it's a dexterity saving throw. Eleven. That fails. <clears throat> okay. Sorry, I'm so nervous. <laughs> <clears throat> oh my goodness. That's 24 points of magical bludgeoning. <laughs> That'll do it. A lot level two kettle down too. <laughs> okay, impressive. And that's just one pebble. Yep. <laughs> uh, what it's color sort of is like, this pebble? Uh, this one. This one is. Uh, it's. Uh, uh, it's sort of a black and white pepper, peppered looking uh, rectangular rock. Um, okay. And as as it hovers in the air in front of Pip it sort of spins at a very quick pace and you can sort of hear it whistling as it shoo, flies through the air. And it even leaves a dent into the door behind it as it goes straight through the creature and just lodges itself into the wood. Um, Pontifex people made it look so easy. Yeah, sure, I can do that, yeah, no problem. I have no spell <laughs> slots, but I can do that. Is that the end of your turn, Pip? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Brooke. All right. Can I take a look at the door? Do I see anything? Uh, yes, you look at the door, and uh, the only difference you notice is that there is no handprint on either side of the door. See. Si. All right. I think I'll walk forward and... Assuming or hoping that it would wake me up again. Okay. Uh, it will take body. you an action to rejoin with your body. Sounds good. All right. The rest of you see the shade walking back towards uh, Brooke and then Brooke opening his eyes and the shade disappearing. <clears throat> if it took my action, do I still have my movement of you do? standing up? Mm -hmm. All right. I would like Alpha to get... Alpha movement to stand up. Oh. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Beautiful. Proceeds to yeet himself. 
And I think that's my turn. Okay, Talix, you're next. Uh, after seeing the calamity that ensued with the rock, I'm going to hesitate a bit, <laughs> but then kind of gather my courage and run up and try to defend my friends. I don't... Oh, okay, so I'm just going to take a big swing with my... With my weird stick. Mm-hmm. All right. So I can set this modifier. There we go. Uh, does a 12 hits. He does not. All right. Oh, I'm still... I'm sorry. I'm so exhausted. And the boy Alex, just like your professor taught you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's my turn. Okay. Uh, the shade. Hmm. Ooh, that's rough. Okay, uh, let me just roll this to the side. One, two, Talix. Um, this creature, it it turns. It's a little hard to tell which side it's facing, but then you see this hole opening up uh, in the middle of it, and you feel this breeze around you. I'll need a constitution saving throw. Oh no. Why did I just... <laughs> I said I need a saving throw and then I rolled my d20 for some reason. <laughs> a constitution saving throw, you say? Yes. <laughs> Let me add this negative one modifier. Eight. Oh, okay. Uh, Alex, you are unconscious. Well, you're sleeping. Uh, your essence is pushed back at the end of the, uh, this line of wind. Over here. Um, oh. At the 10, 20, here. <clears throat> uh, if you see this shade, <laughs> I don't know, just <laughs> from behind. Why is everybody the stealing my hiding place? <laughs> back here the goons. Uh, and with Talix being unconscious on the ground, the shade attacks with advantage. Oh no. Do I still get my shield bonus or not? <laughs> Probably not. Oh, I used my shield bonus last time. Uh, I don't think there are rules saying that they shouldn't be included. Okay. As sure. far as Sounds I know, good. I mean, it makes sense, but. Alright. Uh, does a 19 hit? What, what was the number? 19. Yes. Okay. Because you are unconscious. This is an automatic critical hit. Oh, oh. Yep. Alex's first and last damage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah, here's the unconscious. The creature drops whatever it's holding and falls prone. Oh, I guess oh, no. the, the, that would include the shield in that case. Yeah. Oh, then you two. would have hit me as well. That's terrible. Sorry, uh... Well, uh, we're going with uh, the shield fell on top of you. <laughs> nice. It's okay, Woo! so uh, my fault for Nana Wintis. Um, uh, plus this much, that is uh, 18 damage. Oh my god. Oh, no. uh, I'm out. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't see why people oh, value constitution so much. <laughs> it, it, like, it doesn't matter at all. <laughs> <laughs> we did 18. Yeah, if I had. It would have dropped anyone other than the two melee people up there. All, all three of the casters <laughs> would have all been dropped from that instantly. And, um, Pip and Pontifex, you see the shade that just appear next to you. Um, sort of become um, more see through. And kind of like starting oh. to fade out of existence. Um, it, the, the baits of darkness that make it up uh, stop uh, writhing and uh, begin to just move less and less. 
Pekka. No. Oh god. Oh Your crap. Go. I have no spell slots. I can't help you. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Tekka gives short focus glances between the shade and Talix on the ground, clearly unconscious. Uh, and he holds his quarter staff threateningly pointing towards the shade before he drops it and begins dragging Talix back towards the other. I don't know how far he can get dragging Talix, but as far um, as he can get. Dragging something will take up, but it's like difficult terrain, so it's just. It takes five feet a moment, will take you ten. Okay. So he, I can get here, I think? Okay. Uh, and then Tech uh, will just give a quick shout. Uh, teacher, teacher, take care of your student. Before he again points for a step back. Okay, sure. Um, the uh, the experts among you, uh, if a creature leaves someone else's reach, but they don't do it of their own volition, that does not provoke opportunity attacks, right? It does. Yes. Right. And now involuntary movement does not provoke opportunity attacks. Like being That's pushed great. by the yeah, Delish Blast effect and all those such things. There's oh. uh, there's one spell, and it kind of backs that. I think it's Dissonant Whispers. It ex it's it's involuntary movement, but it explicitly okay. states that it causes attacks of opportunity. So it will uh, take the opportunity attack on Taka instead. Like, it does. Yeah. No right. choice. <laughs> that is fair. All right. Does a... Yes. 22. It does it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> or... Nine slashing damage. Uh, okay, okay. The tendrils of shadows that had started to envelop uh, around Talix's ankles and, and uh, up the legs for a moment let go to instead focus on you, uh, seeing an opening, and they strike, and you feel your skin just opening up and beginning to bleed. Anything else in your turn? No. Okay, I can do Pontifex. Okay, uh, Pontifex is going to... Uh, mosey around five and then ten and then uh, I can go through the shade, right? You can. Okay, fifteen twenty. Okay. You so feel cold here. as you move through. He's usually cold. He's mostly damp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm going to. Uh, does is Talix carrying anything on him that the professor would know about, like a good barrier, a potion, or anything like that? <laughs> Uh, I am not. Okay, then I'm Nothing. going to make a medicine check to try to stabilize him at least so he doesn't oh, die. Oh, wait, uh, I do believe I have a healer's kit. Yeah, I've got a healer's kit, but I, I don't know if you can get that out and also apply it this turn. Um, I might also. I don't. Yeah, I'm just going to make a medicine check. All right. Uh, plus three. Oh, it needs a 10, boys. That'll do 19. It. Stabilized. Oh. <sighs> Stabilized for, uh, I think it's 1d4 hours, like, is whenever he regains consciousness. Yeah. I think. Yes. Uh, so, this many. Uh, nine. Oh. In one hour. All right. Uh, and then. Actually, yeah, that's all my movement, actually. Um, that's it. Hey, back to Pip. Oh, boy. <clears throat> the situation has uh, started looking pretty bad. <laughs> uh, and so so Pip is first going to take a glance towards Squeak and, and telepathically whisper to him, I don't know, Squeak. Can I trust them? And Squeak just says... I can't trust anyone in this world. Might as well give it a shot. And Pip will uh, sort of scamper up on this rock a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'll lock it. There you go. And um, we'll look over to the professor and just say, I sure hope I can trust you. And then we'll uh, raise his right hand and... Uh, on the iron ring on Pip's left hand, it sort of flickers with 
green sparks, and Pip is going to cast Create Bonfire towards the greater shade. Uh, and this flickering green fire starts to roil up under it. Uh, and that'll be a dexterity save. Okay. That is... Uh, oh, I lost his stats. Here they are. I have a 12. A 12. Dexterity, right? Yes. Well. Um, all right. Then that'll be a D8 of fire damage. That's four. And it stays under the shade. Oops. Okay, I didn't ruin it. I nearly down. ruined it. Okay. <laughs> uh, also, um, move your move your token onto the rock. Check it out. Oh. Yeah, it stays. <gasps> Yay! Oh. Look at this it magic. It will go back down, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, oh, I didn't move the thing. Okay, Pip and Brooke. Your go. Um, right. Oh, with the with the fire that uh, lit under the shade's body. Um, you see the, these these shadows sort of like uh, pulling away from it a little bit, and uh, um, it it feels like there is less of them making up the body. And you can every once in a while, as they flicker, you can see past them. There is not a lot left of this being. Hmm. All right. Huh. I think I will just try to hit it again. Okay. Eighteen hits. Nice. And Eleven damage. Okay. Slashing. Yep. So uh, the group comes together to finish off uh, finish off this creature. <laughs> How would you like to do this, all of you? Minus Talix. <laughs> <laughs> I catapult Talix's body <laughs> <laughs> against. <laughs> I think uh, after stabilizing Talix um, and hearing little Pip next to, uh, whenever Pip was on top of the rock, he was probably right, you know, level with Pontifex's head or something. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to say, um, if you couldn't trust me, you would be a splatter on the floor. And then he's going to throw that pebble uh, <laughs> and just like bean it at the shade. And hopefully this time it doesn't just, you know, flop to the <laughs> ground in front of him. <laughs> hopefully it's still supercharged. It's supercharged. Uh, I think it beans the pebble. I think Pip's contribution is he, he doesn't even see this creature die. Uh, Pip is just sort of back against this rock, uh, breathing heavily and f concentrating with all of his might on this fire that he's created. Uh, Tekka leans forward in a dash, using all his momentum in a Paul Walted kick. Bam! Right into the door. It would be a slide from the lower half across the body or whatever is left of it, left of it mm -hmm. trying to slash it into two. Yeah, with both uh, Tekka's foot and your sword uh, ultimately ending their trajectory against the door, uh, this thing falling at, at first to pieces, it like bits of snake just slithering on the ground until they uh, fully dissolve into the air. That's the end of combat. I have a question. Uh, <laughs> so I take it after I see myself get. Uh... Um, Talix. Yes. You hear and feel a light rainy falling onto your body. You open your eyes and immediately notice the enormous tree far in the distance. 
for a few seconds, your mind simply accepts that you're on Polorna uh, before you come to the realization that that simply can't be possible. You hop to your feet, finding yourself in the middle of a small village you don't recognize, with sparse buildings that are far apart from one another. About a dozen people of all races walk swiftly past you, ignoring your presence. You look up again, and there's no doubt in your mind that the tree you're seeing has to be Vakanath, which means that... Well, it can only mean that none of this is real. Or is it? What would you like to do? I, I would like to... Uh, catch anyone's attention, anyone who I can stop and speak to. The closest person to you is a dwarf woman who is just hurriedly walking right past you. Excuse me, miss, where, where are you going? She keeps walking. I, I chase after. Is she walking towards Vakanoth by any chance? No, um, she's walking towards one end of uh, this village. Is everyone walking in the same direction? No. Each of them seems to be preoccupied with their own thing. Well, if no, if I can't get anyone to respond, I guess I'll look back to the tree. You look back towards the tree. The people all around you, none of them acknowledging your presence. So, um, merely just adjusting their path so that they don't walk into you. Um, but none of them ever meets your gaze. None of them ever seem to really even notice that you're there. Until one of them stops. The only one who seems to notice you and pay any attention to you. He's a tall man with long white hair, flowing onto his chest from beneath his hood. His fingers clutch the grey cloak that protects him from the rain, and you notice that his skin is a pale purple color. He tilts his head, a perplexed look on his face, as he takes a slow, good look at you. From the way you are positioned, uh, he nearly entirely obstructs the view of Akanath. I... I don't think I recognize this person. Do I recognize this person? You don't recognize him. Uh, uh, hello? Uh, can you tell me where I am? He brings a hand to his chin, scratching it. Perplexed. He opens, he opens his mouth and he speaks in Plurnan to you. How strange. I don't remember making you. Who are you? The vision of the area fades away before you hear any reply. Back to the rest of you, what would you like to do? <sighs> Uh, I've given a rudimentary first aid. I think he'll be fine in one to four hours. <laughs> Do we perhaps want to take a break for a little bit before progressing further? I'm uh, not able to make another one of those... Uh, what did I call it? Uh, little red wagons. Uh, <laughs> And I believe the caves were designed in such a way where if the tide were to come in, uh, you would all not drown. I think hmm. this is a prime location to perhaps take a break. I mean, if we have the time, and you'd say he's feeling better in one to four hours. In precisely one to four hours. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> At least then we shouldn't just let him leave him behind, so that is not an option. Plus, yeah. you know, I could take him an hour or so to uh, refocus my magical abilities. I'm uh, running a little bit dry, but uh, with about an hour, I can have uh, something else uh, in case something like this is to happen again. And you say you think we have at least an hour? 
before oh. everything starts filling? No, I believe we have as much time as we would like. I think the caves or the ruins were oh, designed okay. in such a way yep. where the tide cannot reach this room. As it would be you. submerged. There is no drain. All right, well. And while he's saying this, Pontifex is like propping Talix up uh, against this rock, like sitting him upright. Okay. Hmm. Brock, what did the shade, the shadow, do? Did you Oh. Sleep? Um, yeah, it basically did the same thing that the bad did to us. But brought us into the other dimension. Hmm. The room doesn't look much different, though, from the other side. In case that's what's, what you were wondering. I believe we should be wary. Strength does not have worth if we cannot wield it. I agree. We should rest now and plan ahead. <sighs> well, planning ahead will be a bit difficult, right? Since you don't know what to expect. Potentially thinking of a way out. Once we're through whatever that is, could be helpful though. Personally, for me, the only way out is through. I am uh, banking on there being other, some other form of exit, uh, as I do not believe I am capable of climbing that rope. Hmm. But such is the risks of adventure. <laughs> <laughs> I think Brooke, adventure, nothing gained. Brooks looks a bit perplexed by hearing that. Pontifex shows us to jump down what hundred feet without a <laughs> way up. I I mean worst comes to worst we can pull you up, right? All of us together. Your armor can't be that heavy. I think he like looks down at and just like clanks his knuckles up against it, uh, and I think it like rings out pretty loudly in this little <laughs> in this small stone room, and so eh. you look pretty broad. You could per perhaps maybe uh, <laughs> let's let's just hope it does not come to this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's hope there is another exit. Don't worry, my uh, my armor weighs a fraction of what his backpack weighs, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tekka will take a walk towards Pip. Hmm. Uh, as you approach, you can see that Pip is like three minutes into trying to pry this rock out of the door that's been lodged into the wood. <laughs> he's, he's resorted now to taking a dagger out of his backpack and is trying to wedge it in there. And get it out. Pip. Would. Can I help? Pip turns to face you and, and uh, uh, shyly looks down uh, before you hear in your mind. Yeah. I can't get the rock out. But be careful. Don't hurt it. I will try breaking the plank. Hold on. Uh, and Tech will just, yeah, jam his quarter staff in, in the wood below where the stone is jammed. And you're trying to pry the entire piece of wood out? Uh, no, he's just trying to break a hole in it. Oh, okay. 
All right, all right, all right. Um, I would call that uh, an athletics check. All right. You carve out a piece uh, from the rotten wood, uh, easily plopping the entire thing off. There. Pip reaches down and, and tries to, to get the rock out of the, the rotting plank. Uh, with it having like broken off from another piece, uh, from, from another piece, uh, it this time it just sort of like opens up, uh, cracks yes. form into the wood, and uh, the rock is freed. Pip gratefully takes it and plops it back into his pouch and uh, looks back at Tekka with a uh, a faint smile. Uh, Tek gives uh, Tekka gives a quick nod and says, "Hmm." Your str stones are strong. They say a child's gaze can turn mountains to dust and dust to new waters. What? I have a feeling I've seen that today. Okay. Uh, a weird Garfield looking ass. <laughs> Pip just sort of slowly nods and then then just starts walking away. <laughs> Take us <a> so cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything you'd like to do during this short rest? Rest. But then okay. they want to be down for a one hour round of dragon chess. There's no such thing as a one hour round of dragon chess. Bonifex is pulling out his full ass dragon set chess. <laughs> <laughs> dragon chess set. And placing it on the ground next to unconscious Talix. <laughs> I find the mental stimulation helps me to refocus my magic. I mean, <laughs> Talix's body is a table. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah. I, I don't want to get it dirty on the ground, and it like slump Talix over onto the floor and <laughs> set it on his back. Oh, his yes, Rigor Mortis is just setting in. <laughs> Perfect for a table. <laughs> you worship a tree, you must act as a tree, become a table. Oh. <laughs> like That's so sacrilegious. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not here to My whole this. character is sacrilegious as fuck. <laughs> oh god. He's basically offensive to everybody. Uh, okay. Um, but it's been a while, so... Since I play, but if you want to... As I would love a round. We'll play the, the speed rules. The one hour of Dragon Chess speed round. <laughs> Don't go too hard on me. Okay. Of course. During the, the short rest, Pip, uh, Pip will actually show Tekka uh, some of his rock collection. <laughs> There's my dragon chest roll! No! <laughs> no, he's, used to playing, on him. he's used to playing the, the slow game. What? He doesn't like to be rushed. <laughs> Wait, what did you roll? <laughs> uh, a seven? No, I mean... What kind? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What did you use to roll? Yeah, what is it a two and a one plus four? Uh, because my racial thing, I have Tyler's precision. I add a d4 whenever in my chosen skills, which ah. is dragon chess and investigation. <laughs> <laughs> so I add a d4 to my dragon chess rolls. So I just rolled d20 or what? I just rolled I awfully. Intelligence, right? Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say you had your intelligence and your proficiency. Intelligence plus proficiency. Oh, I didn't add proficiency. Uh, yeah, you're missing your proficiency that. indeed. Uh, or expertise. Where nah, do I see I my proficiency know. again? Your level oh, three is your two. proficiency yeah, yeah, yeah. is two. As long as you're proficient in it. Yeah. I mean, exactly. it says tool, dragon chest set. I'm assuming that that means yeah. that I can also play it. Yeah, that's Yeah, that's yeah. You, are, you are proficient. Yeah. Yeah, okay. nice. Ooh. 
Uh, Pontifex, you don't like to be rushed. Uh, but even with the even with the uh, the uh, fa uh, fast uh, rules uh, um, <laughs> and uh, on the time limit, by the time the hour is up, uh, the game is yet unfinished. Uh, although um, it does appear that Brooke has currently the upper hand, uh, um, and that's around the time uh, when Talix uh, returns uh, to consciousness. And uh, uh, Jason, check your Discord real quick. Oh. Is this uh, is this technically a short rest? Yes, it is. Oh my goodness! Okay, I'm I was going to ask to get that. Spell slot back. Who who are you? Who are you? Huh? Are you asking us? No. Talos just kind of like barely starts to raise his head. Sees the dragon chest set on his body and is very confused. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, am I like physically wounded? Uh, you have one hit point. Right. I mean. Yes, you are. So there I can are... like see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are there are gashes all over your body uh, where you were uh, hit, which is actually mostly your legs and oh. your left arm. It kind of looks like an animal mauled you. Oh, oh, what what happened? I, I just, like just make sure that I can still move all of my limbs, and fingers and toes. It hurts, but you didn't lose any of them. Oh. <clears throat> Do you want the long story or the short story? Did that thing try to eat me? Yeah. Oh, dear. but it didn't. I'm in so much pain. Oh. Wait, I was I was somewhere else just now. Yeah, in the dream world, right? You know this room with your shadow figure. No, 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 no. But that was sort of like like a dream, like a. Okay, okay. So, last thing I remember. Uh, I was facing that thing down, and uh, it breathed on me. Like I did with Brooke, except I didn't get back up like like he did. Uh, and then I was somewhere else, like, uh, like I was in Plurna. But I don't really know where. You think that's to do with this place? Oh, I think I'm gonna be sick. Wait, was that a dream? Oh, it can't, it can't be, can it? I look over to Tekka. Do you do you know anything about? What does this place do to us? I do not know, but I believe sleep holds power over us. We should be careful. Well, I suppose it does here. I, yeah, you uh, mean... Gone. <laughs> yeah, you mean in here, right? Not in general. In this place, yes. Well, I, I'm sorry, everyone. I got reckless. Oh boy, I've a. Uh, I've taken a beating a few times in my life, but uh, this is probably a record setter. I think I'm gonna hang back from now on, if you don't mind. <laughs> this isn't really my cup of tea. Oh, that sounds lovely at the moment. Oh, doesn't it? First order of business once we're out of here. Pot of tea. 
and an exchange of stories. I have so many questions for all of you. Especially you. And he's looking at Pip. You're intriguing. Pip will just sort of step uh, step back a little bit and go back to sorting his rocks. <laughs> Looks back to Telex. I would love to pick his brain at some point. <laughs> well, maybe we'll get the chance. Thale wants uh, Jamil, maybe... Well, maybe it's... Maybe we'll be together for a while. Oh, oh. speaking of our friend Jamil, uh, Pontifex's gonna pull up the book uh, and, like, mage hand it out into the open, like, you know, right about here where it's floating, um, and say, uh, Hey, I assume that we have discovered your remains, but, uh, would you perhaps have any recollection of what may lie beyond this door? Why you were here? What you were looking for? I know it was foggy before, but... You know, I find that seeing one's own corpse is a way of jogging memories. You remember the door existing? The ink collects itself uh, into a series of answers. to tech. Is that true? You over there. Is this, this smell floral? Uh, can tech can I do a perception check? Yes. You go right up to the door. You try to pay attention to any smells. Um, knowing what you're looking for, you just stand near the door, put your face nearly all the way up against the, the wood, uh, in, in the, uh, nearly imperceptible gap between the two double doors, and, uh, uh sure enough, it feels like outside air, uh, like a grass, flowers, even a little fruity. The, the book is right. Nature behind this door. Lots of welcome change of scenery. Professor, can you help me up? Uh, sure, I'm not exactly the most stable uh, walking stick, but I will uh, assist. Well, I guess yeah. I've got my own stick as well. I'll just kind of like... One hand on the stick, one hand on Pontifex's sure. well, hand or shoulder or whatever. Yeah, Pontifex will help stand them up. Holy get up. And hobble to the door. Okay, so what's next? I believe... Maybe you're a little uh, rough. Does anyone have anything they could do to address this anymore? I only know rudimentary medicine. Unfortunately, I'm too exhausted. Maybe I was a bit too careless with how we approached this. Well, uh... Okay, yeah, I suppose uh, we will flank you, keep you in the middle. If it's not too much to ask of you, uh, our new frown friends, uh, are we perhaps prioritizing his safety? It would be appreciated. All right. No more going into close range then for you. All right. All right. That's fine. I'll uh, dig around in my backpack a little bit discreetly. <laughs> discreetly dig around in your 135 <laughs> yeah. pound backpack. Yeah. Well, I, you see that I'm digging around. 
Let me just stealthily slide this lump off of me. <laughs> I might just leave it back here in this room. I don't think I feel like carrying it anymore. <laughs> What are you doing? Have we tried opening the door? Pushing and pulling? Well, there are the handprints, but uh, I oh, suppose true. they would be useless as they do not fit my profile. <laughs> All right, Tekka, do you want to put your hand on the left one? I'll put mine on the right one and see what happens. That's. All right. Okay. Each of you presses one hand onto the silhouette on the wall. Any doors swing out, open. Behind them, you see something you did not expect to find underground. A forest. Tall grass and, and colorful flowers cover the ground, and a variety of large, healthy trees dot the area growing more densely further in. I'll pick up your minis off the map. Here we go. Ooh, uh, get rid of the text. This cave is large enough and dark enough that you don't see the other side, even though some of these plants and bugs emit light. You feel a sense of solemnity wash over you. Something seems to glow further up ahead, although from where you are, uh, all you see is just some kind of round and indistinct light. This must be... This must be some sort of illusion. Can I make some kind of arcana check to see if this is? Yes. I didn't make a to roll. Okay. Uh, Pontifex, uh, you just carefully uh, crouch down uh, and look at the grasses directly on the other side of the entryway. Um, you pass your hand through it, it feels real, it smells real. You don't sense magic in the air, at least not in the area directly near you, as far as your light reaches. Hey, this does not appear to be any form of illusions. Hmm. I'm, I'm going to and go to the nearest plants I can find and try to collect some samples and also see if I've seen any of them before. Okay, you approach from this direction. Okay. Just gonna hobble over to these bushes. These bushes emit a faint yellow light. Roll a nature check. I... <laughs> Something in me expected you to say initiative. It's a mini heart attack. All right, 19. Okay. Uh, with your vast knowledge of uh, plants, um, it's rare for you to come across something that you haven't seen before, or rather, it will be a rare implorna. Uh, Ladar is always full of new and exciting things, and this is something new and exciting. All right, so I'm going to uh, take out... Oh, dear. Okay. I'm going to go back in the other room and get my backpack and bring it in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to procure my book and the knife, and I'm going to try to cut off a little piece to preserve. Okay, uh, you you remove one branch. Uh, the 
twig itself being just brown and wood, uh, but the leaves themselves being gold and making this just his faintest amount of light. Uh, a single one not really doing much, but the entire bush uh, giving off uh, light in a radius of about 10 feet around you. Huh. You know, this doesn't feel too different from whatever I was seeing earlier, if it was a dream. Um, this bubble thing in the distance, do we see this? You see it? Uh, it's far, really, that's pretty much all you see, but it does give off a little bit of light. Okay. going to investigate this thing a little further. All right, I'm just gonna look at a few more of these plants and things. Sure. Okay. Uh, Pontex is going to, um, head that way, but he's gonna walk by, uh, by Brook and Tekka and kind of say a little quick, hey, keep an eye on him. He can be a little reckless when it comes to these things. <clears throat> All right. Understood. Tekka gives a quick nod. He is currently on his knees and he, his hands are outstretched, like grabbing uh, at the dirt below him. Uh, he grabs some of it and then he, he crosses his arms in front of his chest and bows his head down for a few seconds. This is our lady's work. And I am grateful. Okay. Does that mean this is Good place? Yes. We will be safe here. Huh. All right. On that note, I'm going to make my way over to the Tekka then. But uh, if someone else wants to do something, they. Yeah, what is Pip up to? Yeah. Uh, Pip is like a step away from entering, like crossing the threshold into the room when Squeak says, Oh, no, 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 whoa, 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 no, hey, hey. And Pip just stops in his tracks and, and Squeak says, All right, big, deep, dark pit, you know, that's fine. But I draw a firm and strong line at creepy underground forest, okay? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to stay here. And Pip's like, Squeak, what are you talking about? Come with me. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, you go on. And Squeak just like hops off of Pip's shoulder and just scurries into the into the room before. And Pip just shrugs and rolls his eyes and then steps into the room. Winsor, can you repeat again how the vision is in this room? There are various sources of light uh, in the form of... Uh, um... Luminous bugs and vegetation. Not okay. all the plants make light, but uh, it does mean that without dark vision, there is patches where you don't really see the ground, but you do see like multiple um, points of light here and there. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't really lose your way in here, but there's many spots where you wouldn't really know where you're putting your feet. All right. Just to be prepared, I would. Take my sword that is no longer shining. Um, use a crimson ride to do the same thing I did before. As in, I would once again slash towards my wrist. And once the blood comes out, it takes over the sword and starts lighting up. And with that, I have a light source. And if I could, I would like to cast Detect Magic, which is, how much feet is it? 30 feet around mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming that it follows me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's wherever you go. So for the visual, it would be like a light, shimmery bubble around him. And I would start walking first towards Talek's direction, 
Just walking the room up and down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, starting from near the doorway, uh, you could mm -hmm. feel that the mechanism that opens and closes the door had uh, magic within it. Uh, um, but that doesn't surprise you. You expect it as much. Um, then you begin to walk towards Talix and a little bit further into the room. Uh, the plants themselves do not feel magical, neither does the ground. So besides some of uh, some of the belongings of the people you're with, uh, uh, for the time being, you don't sense magic. All right. I will just continue walking then. Okay. Talix, you said earlier you were approaching Tekka. Okay. I was, uh, I was just going to ask. Uh, yeah. uh, so this, this lady of the land, this is the sort of thing... Do you find at her temples, then? Hmm. Not temples. She is everywhere. She is in the water and the ground, in the air and in the trees. She represents nature to you, then? Hmm. No. Maybe life. That's very interesting. Uh, have I heard of this? I think, we, well, we checked at the statues and I didn't know, so I don't think I've heard of this, right? Uh, I don't recall what your check was, but I do remember uh, that we went over I, it. I didn't know anything about the statues, so right. I assume. Uh, um, so it was just your, oh, it was Broken Pontifex that I'd like seen it. Um, mm -hmm. But do you, it just feels like you have come across them once in a while mentions of uh, um, either deities or uh, just uh, uh, beings that are worshipped across Ladaria in one manner or another, where uh, sometimes it's a little hard to draw the line on whether they are, they're considered gods or they're perhaps people that have actually existed in the past uh, and they're just... Uh, uh, known and respected for whatever they have done and uh you've heard a lot of many different things and this could be a few of them the stories have kind of tangled themselves together i see you know i i'm always interested to hear about the religions of this place it seems despite not having <laughs> The obvious symbol of Akhenoth to look at and see is the, the progenitor of the world. It seems you've come to understand to respect nature in a similar way. It's beautiful. Well, I'd I'd love to hear more about her sometime if if you feel like if you feel like speaking of it. We should make progress first, ensure our lives. Um, and as you hear that, uh, if Talix's eye is keen enough, he might notice some shuffling in his backpack, in Tekka's backpack. <laughs> and that might seem a little strange. Uh, and then you see Tekka take his backpack off. And Leaving it softly on the ground and opening it up, you see a creature scurry out. This creature is a pangolin. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Love saying true. <laughs> uh, and you see this like pangolin, there's quickly giving you a glance, Talix, before it just scurries off and, you know, sniffs around and taking in the flowers and the stones. Oh my goodness! I... I have to try to approach it. I'm gonna <laughs> hold out my hand and see if I can get it to sniff. Uh, Tekka, how hmm. friendly is Oli? Uh, at this point... Yeah, Ollie the pangolin has just about woken up and is a little bit groggy. <laughs> uh, so I think 
Ollie at this point is just standing there and is aware of Talix's approach, but does not make go closer. It's so cute. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I've ever seen a creature of this kind before. Native to this land, I assume. Hmm. I wouldn't know, but Ollie is kind, so be kind in turn. Of course. Oh. I'm going to try to, if it sniffs my hand, I'm going to try to do a head pat. Roll uh, an animal handling check. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is why, this is the reason <laughs> why I got expertise in animal handling. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, does the expertise save it? <laughs> is it a 14 total or is there more? Yeah, 14 total. Okay. Uh, I would leave it up to Tekka. Uh, to, to see it, to decide if that's sufficient, because I'm uh, not entirely familiar with Oli's personality yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, so for those that don't know about pangolins, because uh, they're, you know, not the most known creature in the world, uh, they're kind of like scaly anteaters, and most of them are naturally very shy and timid creatures. So the fact that Ollie is standing next to someone they don't know, it's kind of a miracle in itself. Uh, so if Talix starts to approach with his hand, uh, Ollie will step away, unfortunately. Okay, I, I will relent. Oh, I'm but so that's, sorry. that's not run. That's not run. Okay. Yeah. And Ollie yeah, is sure. finding uh, plenty of food in here. Um, mm -hmm. as, as it wanders off, it finds a spot and it begins to just dig a little bit and um, plenty of ants begin to, to disperse from that spot. Pip will Tell go up sort of near Ollie. <laughs> Ollie. <laughs> oh, yes. Let him be for now. Yes, my apologies. I... I've never seen an, a creature like that kept as a pet. I wasn't sure what was, uh, you know, normal. I understand. It, many react the same. But give animals respect and time. Oh, yeah, yes, of course. <laughs> I, Talix just looks kind of, uh, Ashamed and confused as to why he's the one being told that right now. <laughs> <laughs> now he's not uh, used to hearing effects. that from other people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, roles are reversed. <laughs> Pontifex, uh, yeah. you have made your way further into this cave. The light of your staff, uh, um, it had gone off at some point while you were playing dragon chess, but I, sure. you light it back up. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. And you hold up your staff to that uh, floating light, uh, floating light that you had been uh, seeing from the entrance. And now that you're up further up close, you can see it's some kind of translucent bubble that's floating in midair, and it's shimmering with various colors. It's it's enormous, about thirty feet in diameter, and there is something inside that you can see now as you get a little bit closer. And soon it becomes apparent that there is a woman in the bubble, asleep, with her arms wrapped around her knees. She looks just like the statues you saw at the entrance of the cave. Directly beneath the bubble, oh, there is a small stone altar. On it, there is a metal disc suspended by a wooden contraption along with a metal stick. It's a small gong. <laughs> oh no. Did um, we just find God? I think <laughs> in session uh, three. Is she is she dressed at all? Yes. Um, yeah. What, what's she, she dressed in? Her clothes are colorful, and they are not from any culture you're familiar with, either on Plorna or Ladaria. Although she does have colorful vox on her face and her arms, so. Uh, okay. There's no doubt that this creature is from Ladaria. 
Even though uh, he, you don't recognize where from. Okay, so when you say this creature, it's, she's not like, you know, uh, visibly human or visibly like... Uh, she looks visibly, visibly human, but just uh, she's big enough to almost fill out the entire bubble. Oh, like she's huge. Oh, yes. okay. Oh, geez. Okay, like a 30-foot diameter woman that's fetal positioned. Uh, mm -hmm. Great. This is fine. This is probably fine. Um, yeah, he's going to uh, to kind of turn his head back towards the group and do like a... <clears throat> and you can hear like some, some magical whirring happening. Uh, and he's going to use thaumaturgy to uh, to increase his his volume and shout across <laughs> the room. Uh, Pekka! I think we have your god over here! <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, uh... uh... I guess I can even use thaumaturgy to actually flicker, brighten, dim, or change color for, like... It says flames. I guess I can do that with the light cantrip. I'm, like, changing like the color to... of my light cantrip yeah. to make it blink yeah. like landing lights. Yeah, yeah, I would <laughs> let you use uh, uh, that effect on your light uh, cantrip nice. for, for this effect. There you go. The normal blue light is, like, flickering between blue and red back and forth. Oh. Uh... If that looks, you might want to see this. Yeah, I'm hurriedly hobbling now. <laughs> How far would I be in that time? Checking the parameters for something magical. Uh, you have wandered really from stone to stone, tree to tree, and flower to flower, without sensing any magic until you got close to Pontifex, at first perceiving uh, some of the items on him, the light on his staff, uh, and then the magic directly above you. And from this... Uh, um, the way you perceive... This magic, it's like you were in the dark this entire light, and you open a door, and suddenly it's full sunlight in your eyes. Uh, the the amount of magic directly above your head is almost overwhelming. That's at the bubble. Yes. I see. So, uh, I believe this is maybe your lady of the land. And he's going to point up at the uh, the absolutely colossal person. Well, whatever it is, it is. It seems pretty powerful, from what I can guess. What is she doing in a bubble on the ground? Well, I believe Tekka said that this uh, whole area was uh, the work of the Lady of the Land. Uh, do I have any input on this, Jamuel? And I'll hold up the book again. <laughs> I'm like. I think I like turn the book to face her for a moment as if that has any actual impact on what it can perceive. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, the ink collects itself on the pages. Uh, it, it stops for a moment as if hesitating, and then uh, it forms into letters and words. <laughs> <laughs> She's pretty. Good lord, man. Come on, pretty focus. Big. <laughs> 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 she her depiction is similar but her environment is not but this is her gift too why this place I do not know. It seems but like it must be knew something. good reason. I'm just gonna start sketching. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, just from like looking at her, does she look like she's sleeping? Yes. Okay. Well, there is this gong. Perhaps before we wake her or do whatever. I could have roughly 10 minutes to prepare. I think we have time down here. Um, please let me know before you wake her up. I'm going to get far away. <laughs> of course. Uh, and I'm going to begin ritual casting Comprehend Languages. Okay. <clears throat> I would make my way to the other side of the room. Just check. I don't know. Any exit, possibly? Mm 
Maybe another door? Yeah, uh, c considering the size of this place, uh, um, whatever amount of time it took you to reach the bubble, about the same amount of time it takes you to reach the other side and feel around, um, as far as you can tell, holding up your, your weapon, um, shining its light across the area, you not you don't see any obvious way out of here. You know, <laughs> if uh, if Pontifex is taking time to do a ritual, I might do I might do a little something myself. Okay. Uh, so okay, do do I, I, there's basically there's some... this ten minutes where Brooke is gone and the two of you are casting spells. Yeah, I might ritual cast speak with animals and uh, <laughs> try to uh, approach Jolly again <laughs> and just uh, have a quick little chat. Okay, what do Tekka and Pip do during t these 10 minutes? Mm, Pip is actually going to leave Ollie alone and uh, go up to Tekka. And question first, are the stones still working in here? Do you leave the spell on them? No, I mean the 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 telepathic oh, uh, stones. Those, yes. Okay. Um, Tekka, you just hear in your mind. Uh, Tekka, is this the lady? Tekka gives a slow nod, but does not move his eyesight from the lady, as he slowly approaches then down on his knees then laying down on the ground touching the plant next to him before he curls together almost like a cat and closes his eyes hmm Pip had another question when he's just <laughs> 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 his attention will be will be turned towards uh watching watching Talix try and communicate to Ollie. And, and we'll we'll be interested in seeing how Talix does it. Yeah, uh, for Pontifex and Talix, uh, both of you, uh, starting from Pontifex, your, your ritual casting um, of the spell, what's it like? Um, it is, uh, he, uh, from the little pouch on his left side, um, I think he, like, you know, sets his staff down or, like, maybe even plants the bottom of it to it into the ground. And uh, holding the orb in his right hand, he reaches into his little pouch on his left hand and pulls out, um, like, a pinch of salt. Uh, and then holds it over the uh, the orb and kind of starts to salt bay the thing. Um, and as the salt kind of pours into the orb, um, the little blue light on it starts to kind of shimmer and shift. And uh, it's doing magical shit. <laughs> and the orb is kind of is what's going to grant him this uh, this understanding or potential understanding. Okay, Talix. Um, okay, so my base spell does not have material components, but some some like some things are added for ritual casting right like some basic things it, um, yeah you can uh, you can flavor well, it however you wish there is no, right. i don't believe there is uh you have to then i will i'll just i'll take out my divine focus the amber with the preserved leaf inside and to start with i'll just say a few basic incantations and prayers and i might take out a uh I'll probably just take out a candle and light it and just kind of bow my head in prayer for a while. And, uh... Yeah, I think, I think that's pretty much it. And then I would approach the, uh, little creature. Well, whenever it's time. We want to get to that now. He's not with, uh, he's not with Tekka right now, right? He's well, roaming? Yeah, all is roaming. He's uh, digging in the ground. Yeah. Alright. All I want to do is approach him and say uh, I I apologize if I scared you. I've I promised I'm a friend. Uh 
I'd love to get to know you more sometime, but I'll leave you be. I just want you to know I'll never do you any harm. I promise. That's all I want to say. Sid, if uh, Oli replies, that uh, you may voice mm. him. Huh. Gosh, I don't know. Hmm. He doesn't have to reply yet. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you get a reply, at least not right away. All right. Pip, I think so, seeing this would say, he's shy too. Well, I understand. <laughs> it's a scary world for little ones. Do you use magic to talk to them? Bakanoth's magic, yes. Huh. Uh, so, forgive me, but are you from Plurna, or were you born in the colonies here? Mm. I was born here. I thought as much. You seem rather young, but... Uh, your parents, they taught you about the snake, then? Hmm. That sort of takes Pippa back a little bit, and he his eyes drop, and he just shakes his head. Oh. Sorry, I, I just noticed you pointed to it earlier. The symbol. I don't, oh. I don't think they help me speak to animals. I just do it. Well, that means you must have a fantastic connection to nature. Even more than, well, more than I've ever seen. <clears throat> you should uh, maybe come with us back to, back to Plurnus someday. In the future, when you're grown and ready. What's it like? Well, it's beautiful. I'm sure you'd love to meet Falconoth. She connects the whole world together over there. It's... Oh, who knows what you'd be able to do. And she's a tree? That's right. The tree. <laughs> there's only I... one tree in Plorna? No, there are others, but there's none like her. <laughs> she's... Oh, she's tall enough to tower over the whole world. It's not like anything you see here. It's... Uh, it's hard to imagine. It's hard to explain just how much you miss her absence. But, but this place, it must be sacred too. Yes, this is very interesting. As those words leave Pip's mouth, he, he his brow sort of furrows a little bit, and then he he just gives you a little smile, Talix, and then walks off on his own. Oh, <laughs> trips you. <laughs> uh, and Winther, Pip is going to look look at some of the trees and like see if they're if they're like old and if if he finds like a really old tree, he's going to look for some seeds. Okay. Some nut seeds. Uh roll an investigation check. Alright. Gonna be so good. <laughs> so this represents the uh, amount of time it takes you to find what you're looking for. So uh, it will be a while to just go from tree to tree, um, trying to get a feel for how old they are. And that part is not too difficult for you. Um, just uh, identifying a the tree themselves uh, and uh, looking for something that uh, matches what you're thinking of but it's just going to to be a while especially because this place is kind of mm -hmm. large uh while you're off uh, uh Taka, by the time mm -hmm. you drift off to sleep and you open your eyes again in a place other than this one um you see some differences in the area you wake up in um different kind of flowers, different kind of bushes, and different kind of trees, but 
uh, bes besides that, they fulfill the areas that are similar, where there is one tree with dark green leaves in one place where you uh, just fell asleep. Where you are now, the leaves are of a different shape and color, but there is still a tree in that exact spot. Where there were bushes before, there's different kind of bushes. Where you saw a flower before, there's a different kind of flower. You see the shades all around you of the people who came in all the way here with you. A tiny one where Oli currently is frolicking. And above your head, there's nothing. Thank you for your gift. I know you're with me, even when I cannot see you. Tekka kind of just brushes his hand against these new green leaves on the tree. Can you roll me uh, a perception check? All right. Wow, okay. Oh. Oh. That is a natural 20. Add that to the counter. <laughs> I see everything. Um, meditating turns out to be really easy to do in this state, where you're disconnected from your, your body and just fully in touch with your own spirit. You sit cross-legged and you listen and you watch. Then you close your eyes and you just breathe in. You can smell the plants all around you, you wouldn't be able to tell if you, uh, with your eyes closed, that you're underground. It doesn't feel like you're underground. You can almost feel the sunlight on your skin. You can feel the wind blowing around you. And something about this place and the way it feels alive, it makes you feel less alone. It makes you feel heard. Uh, and for those that are looking in Tekka's direction, you may see like a faint smile form on his face in his slumber. And that should just about do it. I think I'm ready to ring the gong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um... Pontifex, no matter what you're going to say or how you're going to communicate, I checked out this room and there's no other exit, so be on your best behavior. Uh, Maybe it'll help you out getting out of here. Oh, yes, sure. Yes, uh, no worries. Uh, cross that bridge when we come to it, yes? <laughs> sure. Someone else want to do the honors? I assume that this is oh, meant to be run. Yeah, so, uh, so... So is there, like, a mallet of some sort, or...? I think there's, like, a stick or, like, a lever or something. Oh, there's a lever. It's a small okay. stick. No, it's a small stick. A oh, stick. Okay, got it. Got it. Um, uh, it's, yeah. like, a awake again? Yeah, Tekka has roused from his sleep. Okay. And you may see some changes in his posture where he used to have like his head raised high. He now is kind of like crou not, not crouching, but he's leaning more ahead and always seems to be moving. Like he's, he can't stand still, it seems. Uh, so he walks towards the lever and pulls it sharply. Wait, what? Uh, he he uh, hit the. He rang the gong with the stick. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Well, right. It wasn't the lever. Sorry. Yeah. Strikes the gong. Apologies. All good. Okay. Uh, oh, I. 
I see Talix is yeah, over here. Yeah, he's, um, he's going to be sketching uh, what happens. That's it. <laughs> keeping his distance. Yeah, he's got his book out. He's hiding behind the rock with his, <laughs> with his pen. Okay. Um, as the sound rings out across the underground area, the bubble pops. Not suddenly, but rather it opens up slowly. First a mere horizontal slit and then mm. wider and wider, like an eyelid lifting up. The thin, colorful layer of light peels back until it's entirely gone, and the woman floats gently to the ground, her position straightening until her feet touch the soil. With the bubble gone, you can see the colors of her outfit, her long robes uh, full of hues. Even her hair, each strand is of a different color, and they're all tied together into long braids. When she opens her eyes, Colorful light collects across her skin as if traveling through her veins and emerges from her back, forming a pair of translucent butterfly wings. Other strands of light travel down her arms and drip down into the ground, coming together to create a manacle and a chain on each wrist, with the ends of the chains simply fading out of existence, seemingly attached to nothing and not at all interfering with her movements. She glances around, looks down at her feet to see your group. This is the moment when, uh, Pip, you're at the base of this tree where uh, fruits have fallen some time ago and uh, um, they're for the most part gone, leaving behind just their pits. So, uh, they're all collected at the base of the tree and you look up here in the gong and you see this scene, you see this enormous woman who kneels down and even if she does, she still towers over each and every one of you. Then she speaks. Her voice sounds like music, each word ringing out like plucked strings of a lyre, her tone shifting up and down across every sentence, playful yet gentle. None of you, not even you, Pontifex, understand yep. a single word. Um... um. Tekka, you don't happen to be familiar with this language, do you? Goodness. I... I... feel it. She's here. And Tekka drops this quarter staff to the ground and stretches one hand out towards her. You watch as she smiles and extends a hand, uh, not to touch yours, but to touch the f your forehead with just the tip of one finger. You feel her, uh, she's warm. And then there's something beyond that warmth. Uh, you can't quite place it, it's just a bit of a, of a sensation and a wind just picking up speed a bit around you. And then the next time she speaks, you... Tekka understands her as she says, Ah, there you go. Much better. <sighs> is, is it you? My, my lady. My lady. Well, I suppose I am a lady. <laughs> Thank you. For all you've given us. She tilts her head for a moment, like thinking, and then uh, there's uh, this sort of like recognition in her eyes. Uh, she straightens her posture just a little bit, but then she just leans forward, bringing her face just a little bit closer to yours as she says, Your voice? Oh, why, yes, I've heard your voice before. You're... Ah, oh, you're the lost one, aren't you? Yes. Well, have you found you... what you've been looking for? I... Oh, what am I doing? I am so sorry, we have no time for small talk. Alright, the rest of you come here, and you guys don't understand this, but she's doing this, like, gesture, like, come here. Uh, Pontifex uh, is going to look to Tekka 
for like some acknowledgement. Yeah, I'm not understanding. Come here, uh, all of you. Uh, yeah, okay, sure. Uh, and Pontifex is gonna, he's gonna be holding um, Jamuel's book and like kind of holding it open in his hand during this thing and kind of keeping a, like a, a glancing eye on, uh, on Jamuel the book and then move in. The last thing on the book's pages is just the, the sentence, she's pretty. <laughs> There's nothing new currently <laughs> on it. Uh, Pip, what are you up to? Pip uh, reaches down and picks up a few of the seeds that he can see and uh, just puts it in his pouch and then we'll just take a slow, wide arc around. Alex is going to be the last one off. <laughs> His legs are shaking. Oh, yeah. Uh, Telex, uh, Tekka says that she's asking for us to come closer. Oh, okay. <laughs> Brooke? Brooke would follow Tekka's lead. Okay, she extends one end uh, first, the, the closest person being Pontifex. And when he's close enough, she touches him over the head on just the center of the forehead, a very light tap. And then she does the same for the rest of you, one at a time. And then again, after, after uh, this is done, she says, Ah, there you go. All good, yes? Oh. All good? Yes, very good. Oh, amazing. Oh, your magic accomplished something mine could not. Color me impressed. <laughs> oh, but of course. I mean, after of all, course. I, I am here, and I am well, you know. Uh, but the fact that you are here just—it's uh, bad news, yeah. It, it happened. Uh. Uh. Pardon me. Are are you a god? <laughs> 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 Goodness, no. Okay. Italics kind of sighs and like relaxes a little <laughs> bit. Wait. Why are you asking that? Uh. We were under that impression. You are quite a uh, godly in appearance. Impression? Appearance? No, no, no. Wait, who do you think I am? You. 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 You're our, uh, our lady. Our, you have given life and and nat your nature. You're in all. You see her start to twirl a strand of hair. What's my name? Do you know my name? I have never heard your name. Only the lady of the land. That's what my people have named you. The the land? What land? Which land? Eh, pardon my interruption in here. Uh, you wouldn't happen to have had previous romantic relations with a halfling? And then subsequently broke your vows? Uh, Tekka stabs Potfax <laughs> in the side <laughs> with his shoulder. <laughs> You like his a elbow. clink as you hit the metal beneath his robe. Yeah. <laughs> what Respect. is a halfling? What are you talking? Wait, no, 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 no. Um. <laughs> why did you come here? We came here looking for someone by the name of Jamuel Fleetfoot. For answers. For answers. We are all looking for answers. There is a few seconds of silence as she takes in your words, and then suddenly she bursts into laughter. 
Whatever uh, sudden anxiety had taken over her body, it's all gone. She leans backward and the, um, the her voice echoes throughout the cave and you can feel it just shaking your lungs as she cackles and then uh, she she leans back as she laughs and then she pulls herself back for, uh, forward and says, Okay, well, all right, uh, you know what? This is good. This is very, very good. Um, although... Well, if there is no emergency, then, you know, I shouldn't spend too much time here. I should get back to my work. But, ah... Uh, a few questions. How about this? A few questions for you, and then you can ask a few questions back to me. How does that sound? Anything you wish, my lady. Well, aren't you a gentleman? Okay, so my question is, uh, this place, how did you reach it? Do you mean this temple or do you mean Ladaria? What's that? No, this temple. Oh, we just climbed down a rope? A bit more than that. We... Went into a cave, and after going through some rooms, we ended up here. A rope was involved, though. A rope? Cave? Yeah. What about all my priests? Uh, priests? That temple out there is destroyed. It looks like it's been that way for a while. It's destroyed? Uh, Sorry. Long since. Oh no no! no. I mean, you were not the ones who destroyed it, right? Were you? We weren't. We no. weren't. No. no. <laughs> no. Well, no. You Never. don't look like the type to do that. This place was less of a temple and more of a ruin. Uh, it has been quite a long time. A very long, long time. time. Well, that's just. Well, that that will not do. That will not do. Your, your temple. They held these. Pearls, and Tekka holds up uh, the stone. Oh, there it is! Here, hand it over. Yeah, yes. T Tekka rushes forward and, and places it in her hand. Oh, thank you. I was missing this one for my collection. A wonderful, most excellent offering. You all brought one? Uh, yes. Yes, we are all carrying them. She takes one from Talix, one from Brooke, one from Pontifex. <laughs> Pontifex has mage-handed it into her hand without moving from his position. Oh, <laughs> cute! I love it. It's very good. That's the way. Very useful. Pip looks heartbroken. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, he's 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 got it now uh, in his hands and is holding it very close to his chest. And now, now, just... bound one, return what is mine. Pip will hold it out. Oh, thank you so much. And with the five pebbles in her, in her left hand, uh, she just keeps her fingers closed around it. Uh, her hand being so big, uh, she could probably easily had the entire bowl of pebbles that was back at the entrance between their fingers without dropping a single one. Good, good, good. Um, well, now your turn to ask me a question, and then back to me. Tekka is just dumbfounded. <laughs> um, so... Uh, earlier you alluded to something happening, some kind of emergency or calamity. What were you referring to? Well, I am referring to something that has not happened, which is good. Can we hear a bit more about it, maybe? Mm. I did promise you answers. But certain things are meant to be forgotten. 
How can I say this in a way? Well... What matters is that they do not cause any trouble. That's what I'm here for. And who is they? Names are meant to be forgotten. As you seem to have forgotten your own. My own? Oh! Well, none of you know it, yes? None, not, not a single one of you? Nope. Mm. Well, that's quite alright. I know my own. And really the only person who should know it. <laughs> no, trust me, that was literally the first thing that crossed my mind, but I don't have the spell slot for it. Oh, <laughs> and you <no>. would die. <laughs> <laughs> she chuckles and the wings are like uh, fluttering a little bit uh, as she does. I apologize for giving you a, only a partial answer. Can we ask another question? Well, yes, yes. Have you seen people like us before? Never. I mean, I mean you look so cute. What happened to your Vox? Why are they gone? Huh. Well, then I guess you don't know about the other world. Does the word Plurna mean anything to you? It is. Not translating. I just hear the noise. Interesting. Never heard it before. What about the word Vakanath? Nothing. But it is a very nice word. Did you make it up? It is a very nice word indeed. No, I did not. He's looking over towards Talix. Goodness, how long has it been? Don't answer that. Uh, I feel like I would <laughs> rather not know. Who did, who did you ask? All of you. Oh. Um. If you're not uh, so quick to ask another question, perhaps <laughs> you have time for a brief answer. Uh, we found you uh, suspended in some form of magical bubble barrier, and you were awoken with uh, this gong. And he'll like tap the end of it with his with his staff. Uh, and you're telling me that you woke me up without knowing who I was. Of course. Bold. Stupid, <laughs> but bold. Curious is the word I prefer. Well, then, watchful one, what is your question? Uh, why were you in the bubble? Was this something of your own doing? Yes and no. But it lets me sleep for as long as necessary. So that whenever I am needed, I may be woken up. And under I assume what circumstances that was needed. would you be needed? When times are dire. Ah. I can well, then my question. Sure. And it isn't really a question. I suppose it is uh, more of a favor. Anything. Uh, within reason, of course. Yeah, Anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, if my temple has fallen in disrepair, and nobody's taking care of it anymore, that is something that requires fixing. There used to be people, there used to be people here who's entire job was to take care of my home and I don't know where they're gone. So if you were to find them, if, if any of them are still around, could you please send them back to me? We might have seen one. You have? Uh, maybe. Oh, yes. In the beginning. Your followers, were they of uh, blue skin? Oh, they had... Feet? What feet? Um, well, their skins come in many colors, but uh, their feet, I would not describe them as hooves. I fear we may have found one of them. Well, 
Well, I will need... Uh, I will need many of them. Especially if they are meant to do this job for many years. We will need uh, generations and generations of them. So, um... How do I put it? They... Uh, if you were to... If you were to come across uh, people who live in dreams and dream in this world, uh, small, with skins of many, many colors, and with wings like mine, that's them. Their name is Reira, and they need to be brought back. I'm checking Tekka's back to see if there's any protrusions. <laughs> <laughs> no protrusions. Um. Hey, you can see. When they said wings like hers, these are like kind of like butterfly-ish wings, right? Yeah, made of light. Uh, oh, okay, wings made of light. Okay, mm -hmm. never mind. Oh, certainly, if we ever see any. Where would uh, where would we tell them to go? How do you refer to this place? It was no small feat for us to find this place in the first part. Well, it is my home. I should not be. Well, they will know how to find it, but if you could also just show them or give them directions, that would be... That would be ideal. Oh, oh, but don't... Don't ever tell anyone else about me, nor about my temple. Unless they're people you fully and deeply trust. It is a secret that needs to stay between us. Can I insight check this being? Yes. And just to be clear, she's she's talking about a priest? A priest named Dreyra? Uh, a kind of creature. It was one person that was called Dreyra, but not a whole species. No, a whole species. Uh, okay. Oh. It's good that I asked. <laughs> uh, Pontifex is like specifically trying to see if there is any um, like deceit or like maybe even ill intent or threat whenever she told us uh, not to tell anyone about her. Okay. Uh, She's uh, trying 18? to get a, a vibe. Is she sketchy, or was that a like a you know an or else kind of statement? Okay, um, you did not feel threatened by uh, her wording. It's more like she wants you to make a promise. Hmm. Uh, people we trust, he said. <clears throat> and, uh, Only and deeply. Not just anyone. If oh. we were to do this, find these priests of yours and to direct them back to what we would only refer to as home, uh, what is the purpose behind it? What is the reason? Why would we do this? As a favor. And I am to believe this favor is to be returned? Oh! She has already returned it. Oh, please, please. I want to make sure that... Uh, um... Here. Let me protect you. She extends a hand, gesture for you to, to take a step closer, Pontifex. Eh... Uh. Okay, yeah, you know what, what the hell. And he'll, he'll step into it. <laughs> okay. Uh, she taps this time the middle of your chest. You gain one permanent point to, to your constitution modifier. <gasps> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Ta Talix next, Talix next. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. And the the feeling that washes over you, it's a it's an entirely new and alien one, but it's not unpleasant. And uh, as she taps your chest, she says, uh, "Will my blessing do?" Eh, uh, quite. Uh, I 
said I was impressed before, but uh, and I feel foolish for having been impressed so easily. Uh, this was... I feel like you have taken years uh, and given them back to me. Uh, if you don't mind my asking, do you understand the source of your abilities, of your magic? Is this some sort of divinity or something else? <laughs> do I understand my own magic? Well, yes, of course. I mean, it's mine. You mean to say that you are the own source? That would be correct. You know, Telex, I believe she's telling us that she is a source of divine magic. A divine? I don't know. <laughs> are you able to perceive the difference between divine and otherwise? You ask a lot of really strange questions, watchful one. I've made it my life's work to ask and answer the strangest of questions. Well, Perhaps you'd like to take a look at this. I will take out my focus. And there it is. She looks down at the item. What about it? Do you sense Bakanoth's energy? Is it alien to you? If I answered this, will you do me that favor I asked? Yes. Well then, may I take it? Oh, um, okay. Uh, so look at it. I'll need it back. Please. Okay, I will return it. Okay. She plucks it from your hands. Um, oh. This is the... Is this the leaf? Yes. Inside, okay. inside Amber. Yeah. Inside Amber, okay. Uh, the way she picks it up is that she holds out her index and her thumb, and she just picks it up almost like between her fingernails, and it's so small in her grip. And she holds it up, looks at it very closely, and nods and says why well, yes i feel something how curious there something is a connection familiar to you oh no never seen anything oh. like this before well okay then thank you is there someone in it she hands it back so uh well a very small piece, I suppose. Or of a great tree. Ah, curious. Well, if I had all the time in the world, I would ask more questions, but... I do have a job to return to. Would you care, the rest of you, for my blessing? <clears throat> I know that Pontifex has done this already. But could Brook also melee in inside shake for good or bad intentions? Of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, uh, Brook, you saw uh, when uh, when she the lady touched upon to fix his chest, and also when she touched your forehead. Um, you didn't feel any pain, and he didn't react. Uh, like he didn't, he didn't stumble back. Um, there was nothing in his body language that seemed to imply that anything bad had happened to him. And as for intentions, so far you have picked up on nothing malicious from this enormous woman. All right, just to get a understanding. One more time. Do you want us to search for them, or just if we randomly come across them, let them know that you're waiting? Well, I would appreciate some effort into the search, but I suppose I'm not going to, um... You probably have your own lives, and you're busy, and you have your own things doing, but if you could, just do me this favor. Uh, that would be most lovely. And if you can't, well... That's also right. 
As long as this place is difficult to find, it's probably okay if nobody defends it. My lady, I, I shall give it my all to return your favor, to return all your gifts. Thank you. I can help. I don't mind. And, teacher, show your gratitude for her gift as well. Uh, show your gratitude. Uh, he's like already hunched over into like almost kind of a half bow. <laughs> and he'll like dip his head a little bit more. So yeah, uh, I thank you for the the blessing, as you put it. Um. Uh, Forgive my brushness, friends. I have so many questions. Uh, there are two more things I wish for you to look at, uh, if you have the time. And uh, he's holding up his orb, the the gold thing, uh, in one hand, and in the other he's holding up the um, that prism thing. Do either of these things mean anything to you? Okay, uh, so first the the orb. Yeah, the yeah. Uh, okay, are the you gold, handing it uh, over? Orb thing. Yeah, he's he's holding them up, and if she like wants to take them from his hands, I mean she can. Okay, she'll start she'll start from one of them. So we'll we'll go from the orb, and again she picks it up in between the tips of her index and her thumb, and lifts it up, and she uh, she giggles as she takes a look at it, and she says, "Well, what would you like to know?" Um. This. Uh, object was uh, a sort of gift, I suppose, but uh, from someone I am not aware. Um, in my studies of one of the schools of magic, I had a book, and then uh, it contorted and shifted its material into this form that you see. And from time to time, uh, I feel there is a consciousness in it, a presence. I. I hear it speak to me, but I do not understand the words, and I speak back and get no response. I'm convinced there is some sort of significance to it beyond just uh, the magical bullshit as it was referred to by the elves. <laughs> I do feel something stirring within. But, uh, nothing familiar? Nothing familiar. Okay, sure. I must that say, is, uh, nothing about any of you is familiar to me at all. That is fair. Not you, not your items. Must have been a really long time. Well, I am somewhat familiar with long spans of time. Anyway, sir, uh, and then this one is the one I was more curious about. And he's handing her the uh, the prism, the little one ounce prism cube thing. Okay. Uh, she takes this. that one. Were you about to say something? Uh, yeah, as she's like taking that, um, because it's very very small. Um, mm -hmm. He might have like uh, almost like a reluctance and pull back for a second and then let it go and say, uh, uh, please do take care to be extra cautious with that one. That is a, uh, it is very precious to me. Oh, it tickles. It what? It tickles. Tickles. It's pretty. Are you sure you cannot keep it? No, no, I I wish to keep it, but I I was wondering if I can keep it. Uh, no. Ah. Uh. There are many things I would offer, but uh, that is the one I cannot. No, oh, that's quite alright. Although it would be very nice in my collection. She hands it back. I'm sure it would, and he'll pack it away and step back from her and kind of get back in line. Pip cocks his head at, at, at her when she says her collection. <laughs> and he he takes out his pouch and and sort of dumps the contents into his own hands and shows her. Oh, look at 
look at these ones. I have one like this and I have one like this. Oh, but I'm missing one of these. Would you accept a trade? Hip looks at her quizzically. Is that a no? Pip shakes his head no, then shakes his head yes. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have the talking stone anymore. Right. <laughs> and there's no squeak. <laughs> hmm. Uh, he, it seems like he's agreeing. He doesn't speak. Not out loud. This white one with the gold flex. Perhaps I could give you back the one you gave me. Pip's eyes widen a little bit. And he he looks down at, at the, the one she mentioned. Not one of his all-time favorites. So he nods. From her hand where she has been holding on to your offerings this entire time, uh, as she plucks out the one stone that Pip had given her and keeps her hand open with the palm facing up so he can so he may take it he gratefully takes it from her and then she waits to be handed the one she chose uh it, which one is it again uh the white one uh that's a uh, gold flecked oh that's okay uh, Pip, uh, plucks it out of his hand and, uh, steps up a little closer and does, does the stone work? Like, does it do anything? Can Pip feel any sort of connection? The connection works with, uh, um, with other people who hold the same kind of stones. So mm, right now you feel it with her. Because <gasps> she's holding the other four. And Pip will, will say, Thank you. Here. And hold out the sandstone. She takes it? Puts it, it in looks her like head with Tekka's the other ones. antlers. <laughs> Why, yes, it does. I see the resemblance if you hold it like this. Ah, well then. I have spent enough time being awake. Um, I don't remember, did she bless all of you yet? Um, it got brought up. I I wanted to tell us to kind of wait to see how everyone else reacted to it, but then it kind of got. Oh, okay, up. yeah. Uh, well, then uh, for everyone, but 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 Pontifex, so she will encourage you to step forward. Pip will have a special request since he can speak telepathically to her now. Okay. Pip will will just say, "Could you help me with this?" And will point to his neck. The scarf? Yeah, just vaguely under the scarf. <laughs> okay, so the party would only hear her half of the conversation. Um, okay. So she leans forward a little bit. Sort of like to, to bring your eyes a little bit more at the level of, of yours. And she says, this? Mm. He looks anxiously around. Telex is definitely looking at what's going on. <laughs> you called me the bound one. You know why. Ah. Like I said to the others before, 
I'm not a daisy. I'm just a lady. Some things... Some problems... Especially those that uh, you have brought upon yourself. You need to be the one to undo them. Mm -hmm. Thanks anyway. I'm sure you'll manage just fine. You look strong to me. Now then, the four of you, step closer. She taps each of your chests once. <clears throat> Pip, Tekka, Brook, and Talix. Each of you receiving one point in constitution. You may edit the card to sheets whenever you'd like. It's um for for clarity. It's one point to, to your total. It's not like not plus not one modifier. to your modifier. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Oh. <laughs> oh, I have to go back and update all the uh, all the little cards on the I stream will. overlay. I oh will no! <laughs> Flowers in here smell so beautiful. I feel like I'm breathing deeper. Oh, it still hurts a little. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Can I ask one more question? Oh goodness, I am fine. Final one. No more questions afterwards. Is there anyone in particular that would, I don't know, attack this place? Since you said, as long as no one knows it, there needs to be no guards. Oh, I hope not. But it's been so long. Now the... you guys look so different. Who knows what the world is like out there? No, I get it. I won't tell people. Thank you. My lady, I will find ways to show my eternal gratitude for keeping me safe all this time. I'm certain you will find your way one day. If you'd allow me, I'd, I'd like to leave you with something myself. I'm going to dig through my backpack and pull out a uh, book sort of similar to the one that I've been using, but uh, less enormous, <laughs> more uh, normal sized sort of journal. And I'll pull out uh, what's probably a very dry, uh, shriveled flower and, uh, and hand it over to her. This flower comes from another world, from where I was born. I thought maybe you might enjoy it. Oh, what a lovely gesture. And when she takes it from your fingers, the, the flower, uh, it, uh, uh, it regains its moisture and it looks fresh, like it's just been plucked. She brings it to her, to her nose and she smells it. Oh, well, how curious. Oh. Never seen one like this before. Oh, I think I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> this is a beautiful place. Then she begins to stand, and as she does, the ground shakes under your feet. Uh, before you go back to sleep, there wouldn't be some kind of alternative way out of here, would there? It's a bit of a climb, and I'm a little old for such things. I suppose all those stairs must not be very good on your back. I understand. 
Allow yes, me. Yes, all of those stairs. She, um, as she slides the flower into her hair, uh, she holds her free hand in front of her mouth and she blows, uh, kind of using her fingers to direct the flow of air towards, uh, behind you, towards the entrance, and you just feel this wind, uh, start to pick up speed. And it's, uh, faster and faster and faster until you're all feeling yourselves about to be picked off the ground. Oh no. Oh, this should be fun. <laughs> oh, I think I might prefer your, your means of travel, Professor. Oh, I want to learn this one. And then you feel all of you, um, lifted off your feet. Uh, even Oli, uh, is picked up <laughs> off the ground and, um, as all of you float back towards the exit, uh, the pangolin finds its way to Tekka's arms. And you'll watch as the, as the lady uh, becomes smaller and smaller, further and further away from you. Until you've been pushed all the way out of the room. Uh, and up the hole. There, squeak. Uh, seeing this and seeing at, at the first one being Pontifex start to uh, to rise up through the floors uh, and then another and then another when Pip comes up Squeak jumps onto him uh, and holds on Pontifex is just giggling like a child the whole time he's being floated <laughs> oh, hey. oh this is wonderful I want to learn this one. Oh yes <laughs> I think Talix is gonna like start to whimper and then scream as it as we start to ascend vertically. I'm gonna look on for like any person I can cling on to. Oh yes, that's the spirit, Talix. Wee! <laughs> uh, you have some limited amount of control on your movement, so if you want to like get closer to one another, a bit further away, or be upside down, uh, but otherwise you're. <laughs> Um, otherwise you're not uh, in control of where you're going. I'm just going to be kicking my legs frantically beneath me. Um, until re you reach the ceiling of the large drop, um, the, the, par the, the part where you reached it through a hallway, and then the floor above opens up. And then the one above opens up and you keep just ascending and ascending until you're in the very first room and then you get pushed down the steps towards the cave entrance and there the wind picks up such speed that the water that now has raised up uh, to partially flood into the cave it all is uh, is pushed back and then you, you float up the cliff wow. until you reach the top Remove your minis. She's so cool. Is this a perfect time for a toilet break? It is. Oh. Awesome. It is toilet break time. Man, this is this is gonna be a hard recap. <laughs> <laughs> as soon we, as we are like outside of the thing and set down the cliff, he's gonna turn to Brooke and to Tekka. Oh wait, I think it was just Brooke. Like, see. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. There's always another way out. <laughs> <laughs> you just move forward with a, a pure mind and uh, ample amounts of ambition. Things tend to work out in your favor. You just gotta go to that god with a firm handshake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the key is making a strong first impression by questioning everything about them being... Uh, a bit of an ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can give you, each of you about one question. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you 12. <laughs> Here, look at all of my magical doohickeys. Yeah. <laughs> Curiosity killed a cat, but not this one. I am no cat. Yeah, not the frog. <laughs> We have okay. established I am a 400-year-old anthropomorphic, socially inept frog. <laughs> <laughs> Immune Toilet to break. Cats. Yep. 
I'll All right. see you in uh, 10 minutes. All right. Sounds good. See you in 10. Wonderful. <laughs> Use tools, then dragon chest, then everything yeah. else. Proficiency dragon chest set. <laughs> Forget about yeah. making poisons and stuff with alchemy. No, that's dumb. Dragon chest, so you get to make friends. Yeah, why would you try to poison somebody where you can just make an absolute fool out of them? <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're Let's back on the dominance. stream. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, is Austin not? Oh, he is. He is. <clears throat> okay. As the wind delivers you up from uh, the uh, cave entrance all the way up on the side of the cliff and then onto it uh, uh, near where the rope uh, uh, was tied, the spot where you found it, near the tree um, where Pip talked to a bird uh, nearly a couple of hours earlier. <clears throat> you look out into the sea, taking in the view and uh, uh, still surprised and shocked at what has transpired uh, just beneath, directly beneath your feet. As the wind dies down and uh, um, you're, you're gently deposited on the ground and you feel it just uh, um, Almost start to, to blow back in the opposite direction, not pulling you away, but it's like the air is returning into the cave it came from. Um, you all hear the lady's voice one more time. Just saying, um, she, she merely says, I wish the six of you and your pets the best of luck. Six. She's she's referring to Jamiel. Yeah, that or Squeak or Ollie. Oh, well, she did say Ollie that. was there with us. We <laughs> 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 crap. Oh. <sighs> Uh, you know, that ride was surprisingly gentle. Still terrifying. Speak for yourself. Taco. It was enlightening. I have some oh, I ideas for some things. magics to learn. <laughs> oh. Alright. Saka. Even if she's not a god, I can definitely appreciate why you see her as such. She is an amazing being. You see Tekka uh, with one hand around Ollie. Ollie's kind of like over his shoulder. And his other hand is touching the forehead uh, where she touched him. And he says uh, she kind and giving forgiving so we all will help right of course though I also want to check on our friend Jamil I'll open the book okay you open the book You wait. Uh, how are we doing there, Jim? Can I call you Jim? I feel like we're friends at this point. Jim? <laughs> ah, we'll get there. <laughs> um. 
Mr. Fleetfoot, uh, now that we're through all that... Oh. What? <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> <laughs> you turn around uh, to see that same creature that escaped from the entrance of the cave uh, when you had just gotten in, standing a small distance away from you, watching. There's grass and flowers in his hair now. So, does... Whenever he first described him, I got kind of the impression that he was, like, sickly looking. Is that correct? Like, he's very... Like, way, way too skinny and... Or... Yes, uh, that's correct. Very... And very skinny, definitely, in a way that feels, uh, um... Like... That... That has to be life-threatening. That bluish tinge, does that look like natural or like this is a corpse? <laughs> the bluish tinge is does look natural. Okay. It doesn't look like a corpse, but it looks like somebody wasn't eaten well in a really, really long time. Uh... I'm just gonna make sure I'm, like, standing behind someone bigger than me. <laughs> sure, I'll go forward then. Um... Hello? Oh, that's convenient. I... We're not planning on hurting you. Sorry if we... scared you earlier. That one Seems looks like... hurt. Any points, Atalix. Speaking Flernan? Yes. Huh. Well, this is unexpected. Well, <laughs> he's not wrong. Tekka, forgive me, but does do you think he's he? <laughs> do you think he's like you? I would not know. Never seen anyone else. I help? Help me? I help you? I'll make oh. paths in front of Telix. All right. Um, hello, I'm, I'm Talix Meyer. I'll kind of hold out my hand. Creature looks down Timidly. at the hand and then up to Talix. Kills his head. Hello. Are he watches. You... Um, what sort of person are you? Do you have a name for your, you know, your people? I have a name. I help you. Okay. All right. He brings one hand up to the sky, then bends forward and touches the ground, grabs a handful of dirt and throws it at you. Alex, uh, you heal um, 70 hit points up to your what? maximum. <laughs> huh? Did you say 70 or 17? 70. Oh, uh -huh. crap. <laughs> I know that spell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like suddenly like like I stiffen, stand completely upright. Oh, who, who are you? I I haven't seen anything like that. 
Oh Sestera. my goodness, I feel amazing. Sorry, what, what was your name? I, I didn't S catch that. Saskarin. <laughs> oh no, you don't even know the significance of what you just typed, Dennis. <laughs> That's good. You have no idea. I did not. At least not to your significance. My goodness. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for <laughs> pronunciation guide number two. Um. Saskarin, are you a, a, a priest of the uh, Lady of the Land? Or, do you live in that temple down below? Never go back. Well, why not? Trapped. Trapped. Um. Book. I need book. Hey. I'm gonna look in the jam, you I think he said that he needs you. No, oh, mm, uh, no, oh. no, okay. No, 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 okay, yeah, sure, okay. Uh, <laughs> Conifex is going to clumsily slide the book behind, like, his cloak. <laughs> uh, Professor? Uh, yes, 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 sorry, what? Uh, he's asking for the book. What, uh, what book? Uh, there's no book. <laughs> I think he knows about. Can I make I don't know what he knows about, professor? but I know what I know about, and what I know is that there is no book. Uh, yeah, go for it. <laughs> what do you think? Good enough. <laughs> for for what? Picking up for one me of to them understand. Down? Yeah, for me to understand what is going on. Uh. Let me make some kind of a roll. I'll make like a performance roll and see <laughs> if my performance roll is like better than that. Then sure. Uh, what is? Oh, jeez. This will be fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. It's not fine. Uh, you know that I I think he's talking about Jamiel, Professor. It, it, I, he seems awfully, uh, and he'll like glance down at like the little page <laughs> exposed. Uh, pushy. <laughs> <laughs> I think he asked rather nicely, actually. It, no, no, he's, uh, he's a very pushy individual, and he's like, like raising his eyebrows, but he doesn't have eyebrows. <laughs> I'm wiggling my my oh. scalp at you. <laughs> I don't really, uh... I'm gonna look at everyone else and then, like, look back to this... Mysterious... Mysterious person. I'm just... Trying to try to... Maybe back away from the situation a little <laughs> bit. Uh, uh, Mr. <clears throat> uh, uh, Sasuke Eren? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, uh... What is this book you are talking about? He stands there with his arms just sort of like abandoned next to it, to his sides. Um, his poster not entirely straight. His head just uh, like bent forward a little bit, but he looks up to compensate. Then he begins to uh, tap his fingers on his side. I want the book. Okay. Uh, uh, no, uh, not very okay. Um, I, I have uh, communed with my advisors, and they have elected that the book does not wish to be with you. Yeah, what do you need the book for? And why didn't you get it yourself? 
forgot. Did he say forgot? Yeah. All right, look, Talix, I'm going to level with you. As Jamie also says that this thing is the one who pushed him into the pit. Is that true? I, I back away. Can I have it? Why did you do it? Why? Were you with Chamio? Did you kill him? I need the book. Explain yourself. Mm. He begins to step backwards like Talix is doing, just away from the group. How far away is he at the moment? About 40 feet from you. All right. 45. Friends, if he's able to cast such powerful magic, perhaps we should uh, leave. Then he turns back and begins to wobble away from you. I'm very confused. Um. There's some sparse trees away from the cliff. Uh, and uh, Siskarian is soon out of sight. What? Well? Pontifex immediately shows the book page to everybody else. Uh, Jamuels claims that it is the one that pushed him. Well, it seems at least he didn't think he could overpower the rest of us. At least not yet. But that was very powerful magic. Is anything capable of doing something at that uh, magnitude? Is something to be wary of? Perhaps this is not such an easy task to have these uh, priests return home. Especially if they don't want to. All right, this, right. Did I get it correctly that this was one of those priests? Mm. I did not see any wings. Oh, that is true. But uh, her wings were not exactly uh, natural. Perhaps they manifest them at will. I don't know. But if it wished to leave, it would make sense. It would simply sprout wings and fly away rather than walking into the forest. Well, whatever we do with this book, just, pre -pre -pre just be prepared to. Yes. He Something. might come back. Once it. Uh, on that note, uh, can we all come to an agreement uh, right now before we progress any further into our mutual quests that uh, we keep this whole business of Jamul uh, to ourselves for the time being until we have a better comprehension of what has happened. I've never heard of someone's consciousness being transferred into a book, but uh, it is somewhat kind of, relevant. I was kind of hoping we could maybe get some insight from the church. You know, back... Uh... Sure. Uh, I would be cautious to venture to the church first. Um, I have a contact uh, at the Eleanor and Order of Scribes. If I can find a way to get a message uh, to them, uh, perhaps they would have more insight. The whole order is founded on uh, uh, subtlety, I suppose. <laughs> so those are people you trust about this business? Implicitly. I would trust no one else more with this type of information. One person there in particular. I have people that are also interested in the whereabouts of Jamuel. Sure. But 
thinking about it, explaining all this <clears throat> would most likely lead people here, right? Right, and I would prefer that we keep our promise to our lovely deity. Yes. That we keep none this... of you, none of you can mention her yeah, or no the temple. To. Okay. But uh, this business with Jemuel is, of course, curious and concerning, but what I'm most cautious about is uh, the methods by which he was transferred into this book. And this does not seem like a... Well, the, this book transference thing seems like it might be a specialty of the person I'm uh, inquiring about. Oh, I like to say that was powerful magic that healed you? Very, yes. Would you say more powerful than anything we have done so far? Any of us, yes. That's the sort of thing that uh, uh, an archpriest might do back home, you know. Uh, very, very high level. Um, Can I make like a religion tag to check to see if Pontifex knows that this is a six level spell? <laughs> uh, you can do either religion or arcana. Okay. I'll, uh, well, did it, was it divine magic or, or arcane magic that it used? It doesn't matter. I have a plus six. Oh, well, wait, yeah. I... To you, um, Siskirin did not have a focus from Vakanath, so to you, this has to be, to your knowledge, it has to be arcane. Okay. I'm just making, assuming that the 70 hit point thing spoke to me that it's probably the heal spell. Yeah. Which, if, if Pontifex knows that, you know, with that check, then, uh, yes, that is. That is stupidly strong magic, and the, he'll probably chime in along with Talix. The method of casting the spell is was kind of unusual to you, but based on Talix's description, you do get the feeling that indeed this is something that, you know, almost nobody can do. Talix is correct. This is uh, what that creature was able to do is something that priests devote their entire lives in the pursuit of, and few ever attain it. All right. Next question would be then how, in case that thing comes back, I've seen a little bit of what you guys can do and what you're stronger and weaker at. How much experience with, I don't know, protecting something, fighting for something do you guys have? I'm usually not the one that does the fighting if it comes to it. I mean, I've... I've never had a career in fighting. That's not what I'm what I'm here for. Um, about how long has it been since Talix went unconscious? Since he went unconscious? Yeah, since he was slapped into the into the nether uh, realm and <laughs> made about an hour and a half. I have exactly an hour and a half of experience of protecting something. <laughs> <laughs> We've been in somewhat dubious situations before, well, I, I have with others, but uh, it was nothing of that magnitude, not even close. All right. What about the other two? I mean, Pipteka? <laughs> I have learned to protect myself for long. Makes sense. And others, as I've seen. Pip holds up his rock collection. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, what is our next destination then with this book? If oh. we, I'm assuming at least that we all decided to keep this for now, at least to ourselves. Our Are business with Tramiel. We we needed to know the lay of the land. We needed him his knowledge of of Ladaria, but I'm still not completely sure why you were seeking him out. 
<laughs> well, as all of you already know, right? He is the most famous man. And people have interested in him being alive to get his information. He has been, I don't know, absent for a couple of weeks. So people got worried and asked for people to look after him. I saw that and jumped on it. Are you a bouncy hunter? He looks a bit confused. How long have you been on the Daria? Oh, me? I, I've been here, well, not too long, just recently, but I've been here for a few years before. What about you, Pontifex? Uh, my experience in Ladaria. Uh, this is my first expedition. Uh, I am here uh, alongside Telex. He is my uh, guide of sorts. I've been here about a month, I think. DM, is that right? A month? Uh, I don't you... remember. Yeah, about a month. Since, uh, yeah, right. since him and I both came here. All right. Well, Telex, if you've been here before, I'm... I'm a phantom. I'm assuming you've heard of it, since I'm basically wearing the colors. But oh, if boy. you haven't... I... Um, Talix? <clears throat> yes. So you would okay. have heard the name. Uh, you can roll a history check just to see like how much you would know. But like, the name itself would not be new to you. Oh, yes, okay. I saw the opera. <laughs> so, <laughs> the phantoms he's talking about uh, are the Phantom Guard. You know them to be a sort of organization that uses arcane magic uh, to... Um, they all get trained to be um, in, specialized in facing the dangers of Lidaria. So it's a Plurnon group uh, that uh, where it, its members can be found across uh, many different colonies. And whenever people have some kind of issue that requires uh, uh, generally uh, either deep knowledge of the land or deep knowledge of its creatures, uh, um, these phantoms are the people that can deal with it as long as you have the coin to pay for it. So if there is some kind of monster that's been uh, trampling your crops uh, and uh, the, the forces of your town are not enough to, uh, to, to kill it or even to find where its lair is, uh, generally it will be a phantom who take, takes care of it. I see. Um, yes, I've, I've heard of you. So, uh, oh. don't often see them in person. It's not usually my line of work. I'm not surprised. Usually people react differently to me. So, yeah. But I think it makes more sense now. Why well, I could have been looking for Jamuel. He is, in the end, the key to this land, right? He knows. Well, if he gets all his memories back, more than anyone else. And that is a big help for us to explore the Dario. Keep it safe. Keep it from, I don't know, potentially going through what Plona went through. Well, there is one matter. Uh... There's a good chance our quest would end up leading us away from this peninsula, you know, deep into Ladaria. Not as, uh, not to colonize or anything, just, uh, well, I suppose I shouldn't say everything. <laughs> it's okay, I'll keep it to myself. You don't have to speak until you feel it's right to. But yeah, that's what I want with Jamuel. I know now where he is. That is basically the end of the road for me when it comes to that quest, if you might well, call it. it. Seems that our exploring friend's memory has been impaired from whatever incident transferred his consciousness into the book, but it seems to be coming back to him uh, over time. 
So perhaps with more time or with more uh, external stimuli, perhaps he will remember them more. Oh, I can feel his ink moving now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So perhaps it is uh, merely a waiting game, but I would wager that uh, his memory need be jogged by other experiences. Perhaps if we were to venture more around Ladara, yeah. Perhaps it would help to regain the memories. In any yeah. case, I would still wish to uh, send this message back to uh, to Eleonard and Implurna. And uh, Talix, do you know of any method to send messages uh, between to just uh, printed uh, letters? I don't understand. Uh, letters are the only way I know of. We can't use magic. Right. Do any of you have some uh, faster method of delivering messages? <laughs> Mr. Brooke, you seem like you have some interesting ties, to say the least. I mean, I'm, I could probably find someone, but I personally do not have any methods of contacting Plurner. Neither have I done so in the last seven years. Fair enough. Perhaps at our uh, next stop at the colony, I will uh, try to send a letter along. And then, well, I trust that the recipient is uh, creative enough to find a method to get the message back to us in due time. Well, so the professor and I need to stay with the book for a while um, until he starts to remember more at least and well maybe we can try to help him in other ways but as for the rest of you well i i suppose you still have some unfinished business with jamil Teka, pip her lady's task precedes anything else Hip nods. Well, would you mind traveling together for a bit? We can work together. And, uh, Brooke, what about you? Do you need to get back to your... Well, whoever it is that sees you, sees over you. I mean, I don't have to report to anyone. So since there is nothing to report, and he winks, I don't necessarily have anywhere to go back to yet. I think we could use the protection. <laughs> right. Alex and I can make our way here on our own. Perfectly fine, but now that we are carrying something like this, perhaps it is better. Uh, the safety in numbers and all of that, and as the five of us, or the seven, rather, and he's kind of glancing in Pip and Tekka's direction, <laughs> of us that are aware of uh, Jamuel's fate, perhaps we should all stay together. Just be aware that if we should go into colonies, being affiliated with the Phantoms isn't always something people welcome. So, well, I can offer protection. That is one of the downsides that come with it. Oh, don't worry. I'm not used to a warm welcome anyway. So as you can uh, imagine, I am a bit of a... Well, you know, I have my hand in everybody's candy jar and nobody is appreciative of it, so... <laughs> Talix here is one of the few uh, friends I would say that I have. Everywhere else I am discriminated against as someone who uses arcane and divine magic. It's not exactly looked upon favorably by either side. <laughs> and you plan on going back to Plurina? 
Oh, yes, I live there. Well, you can change that now that you're here. I mean, you know, I would, uh, I would wish to eventually return to Plurna, to my home and Vosil, but uh, for now there is work to do. There are questions to be answered, and I have, well, I have my life's work, uh, and it has led me here. And I have made too much forward progress to stagnate now. I have no intention of slowing down. I will get the answers to the questions I have, one way or another. And I believe they are all here in Ladaria. Right. On your earlier question of abilities, uh, I have no experience really with any level of combat or protecting things, but just because I do not have the experience does not mean I do not have the tools. In the event that we are met with a hostile force, uh, I assure you I have an uh, ample amount of means of protection. All right, that sounds good. So, what direction do we go again? <laughs> that way. <laughs> this way. <laughs> <laughs> the breeze comes up again. <laughs> are we going to get a map? Oh, a Ladarian map? No way. Ooh, Whoa. that's what I saw earlier. I thought that was fancy. Yeah, it, it creeped up for a little bit. Yeah, here. because I think you guys can see this, right? Over here where I have it. Uh, On my side uh, of the... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the Zasper And mm -hmm. I oh, have these little called. Xs, right. and that's what I use to have different spots. So, like, Button. you guys are currently... Right here. Oh. Uh, awesome. In fact, actually, I can mark these down because this this will be saved. Uh, a little, you are here. Very nice. Is there uh, any sort of like scale? Oh Ooh. shit! Oh, oh. oh, the bottomless pit of nature. <laughs> What have I done? Can I go back? I can. Excellent. All right. Well, yeah. I accidentally loaded this something instead of. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I had a top-down view of this when that happened, so just suddenly looking <laughs> <laughs> at this bottomless abyss. I'm That's to go here. I was I was gonna yeah. ask if there was like a a scale, mm -hmm. like how far are these things from each other? Ooh, yeah. I have removed it, but I can tell you. That you are uh, roughly uh, being right in between the two closest Plurnon uh, settlements. Uh, the distance to each of them is roughly the same. Uh, your group, and like you can share this information to one another, um, both Pontifex and Talix, when it came to Cle from Cleon, Cleon, and the rest yeah. of you, when you came from Alford, it took you about five days of walk to reach this spot. The oh. distance in miles is uh, about 90. Mm -hmm. uh, do we know... I figured Talix would at least know this. Alford, uh, who... What allegiance are they? Like, Cleon is a Nazardoran colony. What, what is Alford? Are you asking me or are you asking the others? Uh, you or Talix or the others, someone. Yeah. yeah. I feel like Pontifex might actually know this. It's just Matt doesn't know. It's Galatania. The kingdom of Galatania. Were there <laughs> any... Uh, are any of these other ones, uh, Lita, Chipton, or Weira, are I, any of those um, Elian Arden? Elian, the closest Elian Arden settlement that you're aware of is Simlialon. Oh, shit. That's where we came from. That's right? where you came from, yep. Okay. That's like where our ship landed? Mm-hmm. Okay. Took a riverboat up. <laughs> um... 
took a journey through the bayou. Do any of us have, like, a map? Or... I do. Oh. Uh, I actually spent a lot of money on a very detailed <laughs> map. Um, I don't know if it's... I don't think it's a... Uh, it's just detailed world map. So I think he has a extremely detailed Plurnin world map. And then, okay. like, on the other side is, like, a, you know, a <clears> relatively <throat> detailed, like, known Ladarian map. It's this. Yeah, Your yeah, he is this. His. his map is worth, like, over 10 gold. It's a very nice map. <laughs> <laughs> so upon us talking about this, he has probably, like, whipped it out and scrolled it out across the floor. And that's what we've been looking at. You want to mark things, you can use... Oh, I can... Uh, I think I need to promote you for that, but you can bring in pawns. Like, for example, I'm about to place one here uh, for the cave. Let me promote each of you. If you want to add notes, text will not carry over, but items that you put in will. So you can like lose, use these little pawns and then give them names slash descriptions if you'd like. Let's make them not snap to the map. There we go. Well, I I think uh, for whatever contact you need to make, Professor Cleon might be our best bet in Azardor and Colony, don't you think? Well, my contact is based in Ilya Norden, but... Uh... If we, there is an Azardon colony, perhaps I would have enough clout, you could say, to maybe call in a favor. It would probably have a better chance there than <laughs> a Galatanian colony. I agree. I think we should steer clear of Alford. So unless any of you have a uh, Wait, very firm stance in Alford, I would recommend that our first stop be back to Cleon. Well, I... Galatania is... Still not exactly friendly to, you know, Western people. Sure. So perhaps to Cleon? Uh, there's a person that I wish to meet with anyways. We are uh, on a bit of a hurry to get to here before the changing of the tides. So uh, we did not spend the amount of time I would have liked to. But if we are to go back, there is... Well, perhaps I would have enough sway to get this delivered to, uh, to Simli Island without us having to make the journey, and perhaps we can uh, talk with this person. Good. We have been to Alford. They were not kind. Yeah, that's not surprising. All right, well, let it settle to Cleon. Yes, anyone have uh, objections? Hip? They should Squeak. be much friendlier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Definitely happy to be in a kind of place. Well, I would not describe Nazaradorans as being kind, per se, but uh, logical. <laughs> I love that by now you're used to the rat talking. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, now we basically talk to, talk to Squeak. <laughs> we yeah. mean to talk to Pip. Yeah, Pip's Squeak's rat. Squeak's like is... his representative. <laughs> yes. But uh, they are logical. Uh, they will not be... And driven by emotional responses. I do think it is a, a safer place to go, we could say. More accommodating, as long as we have something to offer. And perhaps they know me. Well, before we go, uh, I need to take a little break. <laughs> Yes, of course, perhaps we... I didn't uh, exactly uh, get a good rest. Perhaps we find a suitable place to set up camp along the way. I would be remiss to do it here with that uh, creature in the woods that's after the book. Oh, right. Okay, what Pip. exactly is the plan? Oh, yes? Uh, first, Pip will call up towards that tree where the, the bird was before and say... Hello, you still up there? For a few seconds you hear nothing. And then a small bird's head pops up from the nest. Um, seems like you might have woken it up. Oh, sorry. 
Um, I just wanted to say thanks and be careful because there's a weird guy out there. And it's not any of us. <laughs> <laughs> the bird whistles back. Thanks for the warning. Okay, Pip won't press his luck. <laughs> you be careful too. Aww. Oh. If you see a very big bird, don't go close. What? <laughs> big bird dangerous. Okay. How big are we talking? Big. It's like common Ladarian knowledge, right? <laughs> The, the thing about the dragons and the big fucking birds where it's like if there's one overhead don't go into a clearing because you're going to get swooped uh, the, the squeak that uh, on Pip's shoulder just sort of goes <coughs> and then Pip's voice comes out of him saying we gotta be careful about big birds okay well that's new squeak says I hate when he does that Oh, that's, uh, interesting. Oh, well, oh. uh, anyways, yes, uh, all right. Find Thank a place you. to set up camp. Take a rest. Continue our journey to Cleon. Wait, is it, is it nearby, that, that big bird? Is it nearby? You hear uh, Pip audibly tweet. <laughs> you hear the bird chirping back from the tree. Sometimes. Pip looks back and nods. <laughs> okay, well, let's get some distance before we camp, I guess. <laughs> I have seen these big birds. If they are the same, we should run. I've read of the dangers of the, uh, how do you say it? The Ayatara Va, I believe. Oh. The handlers of the giant birds, the, uh, the dangerous yes. natives, Ayatara Va. Yeah, they can be ruthless. Oh, so, uh, we find a suitable place to set up camp. Uh, perhaps okay. somewhere with plenty of foliage cover. Yeah, I was about to ask, like, what, what characteristics would you like your area for the camp to have? Something with a canopy, I guess. Mm -hmm. Is that a vacuum cleaner? It is, I'm sorry. <laughs> Girl, okay. I'll wait. <laughs> the doors are back. <laughs> they sure are. Yes, yes. Okay, um, I need all of you to roll a survival check. Hmm. I don't want to meet Big Bird today. <laughs> Yo, you really do not. <laughs> Sesame Street ain't what it used to be. Ooh, first nice. nat 20. Congrats! Hey! <laughs> you find us a good place. Okay. Um, in search of a cover, you are forced to approach the tree line. But once you once you do, you try to go um, in a slightly different direction from from where you saw Saskarian go. Um, and then you begin to gently veer a little bit south uh, uh, in the general direction of the road that connects uh, Cleon to Alford. Uh, no. <laughs> no, Matt. <laughs> it's going um, in the, in the uh, pronunciation <laughs> guide part two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you try not to travel too far with uh, uh, the the current condition that you all you're all in uh, no more with, with Talix's uh, uh, 
almost deadly injuries taken care of. Uh, um, what you're currently worried about is just uh, your lack uh, of uh, general energy, uh, magical or not. So you move until you find like you have sufficient cover around you, uh, but not too deep into the... Um, well, this area is a bit more swampy. Uh, there's parts uh, of the terrain where you have to circle around large, uh, wet areas where you're not even sure if the terrain would hold you. And the trees are covered in vines that reach all the way down. Uh, the vegetation is not too thick at first, but the further you move west, the, uh, the closer the trees are to one another. Uh, at some point, the canopy closes up over your heads and you can hear the chirping of birds that puts you on edge a little bit at first but they sound small nothing screeching above your heads um, and then you begin to set up camp on a spot where the, the terrain feels dry enough it's uh, about the so, sometime in the afternoon, you still have plenty of daylight, uh, but you don't, don't you don't push your luck too far for now. Um, is there anything you'd like to do once you have set up your camp? Uh, Tekka would forage for food, try to find any like fruit trees or berry bushes. Or that sort. If Tekka allows me, I would follow along. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you have any particular abilities to let you find food? No. Mm -hmm. Nothing in particular, just basic knowledge of the natural flora. The yep. Okay. Anyone so... have an outlander background? <laughs> that is, <that's>, yeah. <laughs> That'll do it. That's kind of what I was asking. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, both of you, both of you, um, Brooke more than Tekka, uh, with Brook being more familiar with uh, an assortment of, of the rains, while Tekka is more uh, familiar with just uh, the area around his own hometown. Uh, but both of you put your heads together and uh, uh, you, you search around. You can either both roll a survival check or just one of you rolls with advantage. I believe in Brook. Oh, Brook's God. got this. <laughs> All right. That's not what I... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you forgot to roll a die. Just getting the one out of the way, I appreciate yep. it. Right, I did... Oh, I didn't roll you a second time. Advantage. Yeah, you gotta put two d20s in there. And then yeah, 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 advantage. I just clicked roll advantage. <laughs> you know, we could oh. totally do that if you click the advantage button. It checks yeah, how many d20s one. you have there. Really? Yeah, I did click it. That's something that I thought about doing. All right, let's no, put that not, on the to-do list it's for not Jason. A thing yet, but we can do it. Yeah. Right, if you, uh, it feels like knowing yeah, what Jason can easy. do, that should be uh, pretty easy. Yeah. Um. Okay, so your highest is an eleven. Mm-hmm. Uh, this this isn't due to your or Tekka's lack of. Uh, abilities um, but it just looks like this land doesn't have a lot to offer um, the the berries you pluck are not uh, all fully uh, fully mature and there isn't a lot uh, uh, of food that you end up bringing back but uh, um, there's going to be at least uh, at least uh, um, enough If you wanted to have a more complete meal, you might have to just uh, uh, also consume some of your rations if you have any. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Tekka, I know I've asked you before, but I understand that the Lady of the Land is important to you. I basically know nothing except for what I've learned in the past few hours about her. And I'm usually not the kind of guy who accepts quests without properly knowing or having done his research about who is the quest giver, if that makes sense. So, if there's anything you can tell me that you haven't said yet about the lady, 
I would be appreciative. Hmm. Brock, the lady gives and takes. Some years she gifts us with a great harvest. Other years she tries us with droughts or empty nets. But in the end, she always provides. And at the end of our time, we return to her. I... I can't think ill of her. That's fair. That's already a lot you gave me. So, I'm pretty sure I heard you down there. Like, when I was attacking one of the shadows. Mm. They said you were hit by that exact shadow that was me. You could not have known. I will not blame you for lack of information. You mean well. That I know from our limited time. All right. Well, if you ever need something, let me know, okay? Even if you say I don't have to, I kind of want to make it up. Let us have this meal together. That's easy. And I take one of the fruits and put it in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think Tekka uh, like grabs one of the like not fully grown berries and kind of just chews on it in his mouth and uh, looks at Ollie just digging around uh, by the roots of a tree for insects. I love how the do not eat plants or animals you're unfamiliar with is like one of the key points of the dangerous part of this area. <laughs> like, verify with your local Essen whether or not they're safe. <laughs> it's like, fuck it. It's good enough for Sand Slash. It's good enough for me. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, are you with the rest of the party or is it just the two of you? Uh, I mean, afterwards, I'm assuming once we're done. Getting all yeah. the stuff. Yeah, Go imagine that talks on our trek back and like we we'll probably meet back up with the rest now. Okay. I was gonna say, is there a time where uh, the professor is just sort of sitting alone? Uh probably. Um in fact, if, if he's ever like sitting alone, you might come across him with him just like sitting and just staring into the glowing part of the orb and like occasionally nodding or shaking his head. Okay, then. <laughs> uh, Pip will just sort of walk up in front of Pontifex while he's doing that and just, like, stare at him. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you would notice. Hold on. Wolf. I'll give it like a 50-50. He notices you. <laughs> Pip's small. This <laughs> is true. Uh, no, he does not. Okay. Pip just sits down uh, in front of you and waits until you do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's probably like a good, like, five minutes or so until he's like, uh, oh, oh, hello. Uh, I did not notice you. You're very he small. He looks at you. Is there uh, something I can do for you? Pip nods. And uh, what would that be? Uh, my services are at your disposal. You have earned that at least. You uh, helped me to uh, save Talix in his moment of need. I feel like I owe you one. 
Pip squints and then gives a little smirk. And then he reaches up and plucks at his hair. And you see he pulls out a little strand of his hair. And then he takes out of his pouch that rock that the lady gave him that he once used to speak telepathically. Mm -hmm. And he wraps his dark strand of hair around this stone and then takes it up to his lips and touches it to them. And then as he hands the stone out, it lifts up in the air on its own and floats towards you. Uh, okay. He'll, like, you know, pinch it out of the sky. Is this a gift for me or something? And then you hear in your mind, Can you hear me now? Oh. Yes. Uh, he will respond telepathically if possible. I don't know if there's a response involved in this. If not, then he'll just speak out loud. You can do these things. Even without the stones. Uh, what do you mean? Is speaking uh, telepathically? Yes. It seems like you are able to do this. Uh, I can do something uh, similar, but uh, not entirely. And it is a lot more difficult for me. Fear I'm not as skilled at this as you are. I can only do it a little bit. But you're not afraid of arcane magic, are you? No, of course not. Not to say that there wasn't a time where I was, uh, in my younger, more naive days. Um, but you can do it. I can. Not always. It is uh, relatively new uh, compared to my lifespan. It's I've only known it for the past, uh, while. <laughs> Have people ever hurt you because of it? Because of the arcane magic? Yes. Eh, uh, not physically, but, uh, there's a bit of a issue back at home in Eleonarden and Vosil. Uh, you see, when someone like myself, a non- uh, innately magical being, um, you know, a member of uh, one of the races that is not of the Moonwatch, comes to the elven capital and seeks to learn arcane magic, there is difficulty involved, um, both bureaucratic and natural difficulty, just I have no magical aptitude, but uh, with decades of study and experience I managed to uh, get accepted into the Eleonardan Order of Scribes. Um, they're fairly selective with who they pick, and... Well, I was chosen by one of the High Scriveners to be uh, his student. He's my mentor. This is the person I wish to send a message to. And in doing so, uh, there was a bit of a social incident. Uh, one of the other elves that was uh, an aspiring scribe uh, was not selected in favor of me, and she did not take it too well. And she's of a relatively powerful family of the nation, so I am facing a lot of litigation and legal difficulties and, you know, attacks upon my character, but no no so physical you... harm for arcane knowledge yet. thus far. Correct, yet. And you're lucky. Yeah. Don't know if I would go so far. I would. You know, being discriminated against for arcane magic is only one side of the coin. Well, I have faced significantly fewer troubles since my time in Eleonardan and learning of the arcane magic. Most of my hardships were in my younger days back at home. People are not fans of uh, those who are different from they are. Yeah. My people are very sparse and looked at with concern by some. I mean, some of them voice their concerns by... Oh. 
mistreating of others. Apologies. You're good. I was uh, bullied, as you say. Mm. I was bullied too. Yes, it is a, a sad thing that happens. But uh, good came of it. Had I not been bullied in my younger days, I would have never become a cleric of the goat. Or a follower of Vakanath at the time. This was before the Pantheon, you see. Sure, I don't really know anything about that. But what I do know is that you were a teacher, right? Yes, for many years. It is uh, my greatest achievement, I would say. I, I need to be able to speak with you. With all of you. It's important. And doing this right now, it's, it's something new to me. But you could teach me. Professor, teach me. Teach you to speak? Like this. With everyone. Hmm. You can teach me. I can try. It's not my area of expertise, but I'm not one to shy away from an academic challenge. If uh, you believe that it is appropriate and that I am capable of doing so, then who am I to deny you? I will do everything in my power to do so. Good. Would you, uh... Don't wish to pry, so you need not answer if it is an uncomfortable subject, but... Uh, why do you not speak? Hmm. Maybe I'll tell you when you teach me. And then Pip will lift his hand up again, and that rock leaves your grip and goes back into Pip's, and he puts it back in the pouch. Maybe that can be our first conversation. Pip oh, nods and steps aside. Thank you for confiding in me. Is uh, Talex doing anything in particular while while the Brook uh, and Tech are gone and Pontifex and people are on their own? Talex, as soon as we found a decent camping spot, uh, he'll either he's going to take out a blanket and if the ground is like wet or anything, he might just I look for the best spot on the ground and lay it across and lay his bedroll down and just start to dig into his rations and take a little nibble but probably just mostly go right to sleep, take a little nap or whatever we need to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, all right, anything else once the group is back together? What would the time be? How about the time uh, you and Tekka return with some food, the sun would start to be setting down. All right. Anyone good at cooking? Talix rolls over away from the rest of them. <laughs> 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 well, we didn't find too much, but we can probably share. I, st I still have some rations. So As do I. If we throw some stuff together... We can get something to eat together. We can share. Sure. Okay. Uh, with the food that uh, Brooke and Tekka have collected together, um, the five of you collectively will only need to use up two rations for today instead of like five total. Uh, I can cover both of them. I have exactly two, so it cleans up my inventory anyway. <laughs> okay. okay. Two days of ration, so I'll just use both of mine. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, what are your arrangements for the night? Talix is asleep. 
Yeah, I'm okay taking the first watch. Yeah, How many do we need again? How many watches? For full night, four. Oh, it's been so long. <laughs> it's eight hours of sleep and everybody can take up to two hours. Teka takes second. <clears throat> Brooke, Teka. I think Pontifex will take last. I see him as like a, a very early riser anyways. Yeah. Pip will climb a tree to go to sleep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if he can. So, so we have one for first, for the second, for the fourth. Yeah, Tekka will do that if no one else offers. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I'll be watching the whole night. <laughs> you can sleep good under my care. The rats not sleep? I'm one of those Ladarian rats, you know? <laughs> Special rat. Okay. Uh, Brooke, I'll take your perception check. In fact, uh, well, no, because because of circumstances, let's just go in order. Okay. Uh, Brooke, how do you know, uh, keep watch? Um, is there any anything in particular you do? Well, usually sit in one spot, quietly, and listen or look for any changes in the surroundings, like any noises that are in there at the start. Any movements? It's been many years since, since the last time you were with uh, um, a group of people this big. It brings back memories. Uh, Pip being currently on a tree while uh, Pontifex, Talix, uh, and Tekka are closer, just huddled near the fire. Um, you sit there among them and you watch. You keep them safe. You listen for the sounds of the night. Nothing disturbs you. You awaken Tekka. <clears throat> it's your turn. Nothing out of the usual so far. Good. Well, well done, Brooke. Rest easy. Alright. And I lay down. I'll take your perception check. Mm hmm. Let's see. Tekka, uh, you think back to the miles you have walked so far, and you wonder how many more you will walk from here on out. You're so far from home, and the things you've seen today, well, they'd make for quite a story back home. You'd love to let everyone know what you've found out yet, but it sounds like you'll be heading away from your home rather than uh, back towards it anytime soon. You watch over this group. Nothing happens during the night. Nobody offered to take the watch after yours. What would you like to do? Yeah, so Tekka will wake up Talix. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? What's going on? Hey. Ah! <laughs> do not wake them. What, what is this? We all need to put in our effort. Ensure the night is safe. 
this time is yours. Uh, is this another one of your poems? Please watch over the camp for two hours. Then you can rest again. And wake up oh. your teacher for the last two. Understood? Oh, oh okay. Talix does not immediately get up. <laughs> <laughs> He's a snooze buttoner. <laughs> <laughs> I will watch until you wake. Oh no, I, I'm I'm up, I'm up. Okay. Can I trust you? Mm, uh, hold on. Eyes open. Okay. I'll just pull myself out of my bed roll and. How's the fire still lit? Mm-hmm. All right. I'll just get very close to it and. Kind of like rub my eyes. Okay. Okay. Two hours. Good. And uh, Talix would have to head to sleep. I'll take your yes. Thank you. Alex, what you've the, what you've gone through today has been uh, um, has shaken you for many reasons. There are a lot of questions that you are left with. Uh, you're not really sure where or when you might find answers for any of them, but um, at least you're with Pontifex, and the rest of these people are interesting um, to you. And you can't wait to have them answer some of them. For the time being, you keep watch, fighting to keep your eyes open. Nothing disturbs you. You were instructed to wake up the professor after you. Yeah, I'll go over and... Like, Jen, at first, just, like, quietly, Psst. Professor! Huh? Yes? Oh. What? Oh. Are you already awake? Uh, DM, about what time is it whenever this, this is occurring? Two hours before dawn? Like 4 a.m. or so, maybe? Uh, I was just, uh, rousing from my somnolence, yes. Oh. oh. I have a bit of a morning meditation. Uh, oh, can good. I help you? Uh, yeah, I'm supposed to tell you to watch over the camp for a couple hours before oh. everyone else wakes up. Sure, of course. Oh, good. Okay. Um, you found Pontifex like sitting up, but like <laughs> leaned up against a tree. He's the type of dude that like falls asleep in a recliner. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like you know, from from many many decades of of sleeping out, you know, tables and at at work desks. Are you still wearing your armor? Oh. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yep. All right. Uh, and actually, maybe a Wait. thing of note, Telex, you've never seen Pontifex, like, disrobe, except for, like, the occasional, um, like, him claiming that he's going to bathe and you've heard, like, the clattering of metal. But other than that, <laughs> you've never seen him disrobe in any capacity. Interesting. Like, you probably have no idea what this man's leg looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, good night. Uh, sure. Immediately face plant back into my bed roll. <laughs> Don't need to cover up. I'll, uh, Pontifex will, like, bring his staff in closer and, like, tap on the end of it a couple times with his finger, and I'll cast the light cantrip. Um, but it's with, like, a, like a red light. Like a, a dimmer red light. Okay. So it's more conducive for sleeping for everyone. Uh, and yeah, he'll like go and, you know, hobble his way over towards like the center of camp and uh, 
And I think he'll just stand there like a statue. Uh, All right. Just pontificating. Uh, I'll, I'll take your perception check. At disadvantage! <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine. Are you? Pontifex, as you watch Talix go back to sleep in his bad role, uh, you find yourself thinking about how close you got today to losing him. After a while, uh, your attention goes elsewhere. You look up, you listen to the birds, uh, attentive to uh, the possible sound of a large bird of prey approaching, but you hear no such thing. And instead, um, a short while after Talix has gone to sleep, you feel a rumble. First, it sounds just like wind through the leaves, but then you realize that the, the ground is shaking slightly at first, and then a bit more. Some of you, uh, Pip perhaps, uh, being high up in the branches, would uh, feel it even in their sleep and uh, just uh, um, be woken up by it. The sound of the earth shaking begins uh, to grows and grows to the point where it sounds like uh, a beast growling from deep underground. All of you wake up uh, at some point or another, and after a few seconds, it begins to fade. Hmm. P Professor? Yes, nothing to worry about. It is just one of those Ladarian earthquakes, they call them. But you can go back to sleep. Oh, okay. We are nowhere near rocks. Slides are not an issue. Uh, if there's anything like, uh, like, furniture adjacent to, next to anyone, he's gonna, like, kind of walk around and, like, you know, mage hand things to be just a little bit farther away from people so nothing falls on them. Make sure that no one's backpacks would, like, flop over yeah, on their no, faces. Yeah, no 135-pound backpacks are gonna squish <laughs> his head. Yeah, it would crush him in. He made sure that Pip is still on his tree, not falling off. <laughs> and, uh, once everyone's asleep, he's gonna say a little, a little short prayer to the goat. Uh, like, clutch his amulet in one of his hands. Um, Specifically, his left hand. Uh, say, I, uh, I almost failed in the quest you gave to me. I will be more vigilant from this day forward. I hope to remain in your guidance. And that's it. There is no reply, as uh, most of the time is the case. Sure. And eventually, uh, the rest of the group will uh, wake up from their sleep. And we can end the session here for today. Nice. What a session. Right. Down! Oh, man. Yeah. Sorry about some do. of the mic noise here at the end. All good. Oh, nice. Nice. Summary Bye. for this one. Hey, calm down there at the end. That was a nice, relaxing, uh, denouement. Bonding time. Oh, yeah. yeah. First character development. Well, not really development, but getting yeah, to know getting some character RPs. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. But yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for the session, Winter. This was great. Yeah, yeah. Didn't think we'd meet God. <laughs> so many revelations. What in the world? I didn't think that Talix's eight constitution was going to come to bite him so soon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How quickly that spiraled. I mean, exactly. as you point, I mean, as you pointed it out, if it would have hit any of you three, you yeah. would have all gone down. So maybe don't should, worry. Maybe we should just donate all of our constitution gifts to Talix. <laughs> By the way, I also want to point out that is exactly the one and only time Talix has ever taken damage in this campaign. <laughs> it was <laughs> a critical exactly hit. One, knocked him out. one shot. I think I'm the only one that hasn't taken damage.
Yeah, that's right. And squeak. Well, yeah. I guess for counting pets, then. <laughs> Ollie's, Ollie's also in the lead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for being here today, and thank you for being uh, your wonderful selves. I'm going to call off the stream now. Thank you for everyone who has kept us company throughout this, and I hope you guys also had fun. And yeah. uh, we'll be back here next Sunday at 1 p.m. Central Time. Well, thanks All for right. playing, everybody. Thanks for yeah. watching, everyone who watched. Thanks for thanks, DMing. Everybody. And uh, thanks again for uh, for inviting me to be a part of this. This is fantastic. <laughs> Glad to have I... you on board. And thank you, Matt, for the excellent recap. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, yeah. It wasn't yeah. excellent, though. I mean, really. I liked it a lot. It, yeah. Was, yeah, it was very neat. It made me yeah. think of Legend of Korra. Right. <laughs> That's true. Oh, really? That was my first thought. I haven't actually because... seen that yet. Is that what they do on that? Yeah. That's yeah. what they do. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Well, good. That's, cool. that's a little... There's, like there's a some sports Avatar commentator. vibes to this campaign. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Legend of Korra is all like... Sea of Chaos is made of four elemental energies. Sea of Chaos is made of four elemental energies of the four elemental planes overlapping upon one another just right to make a big-ass tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the story. That's... <laughs> all right, that's I'm cool. going to call off the stream now. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.